Hello and welcome everyone to another edition of Twitch Solves the Rubik's Cube. For the next hour, you guys in chat will have control over a virtual cube through Twitch chat. Your goal is to solve the cube collectively. In these you know, difficult times, we think this is a really fun way to get together and you know, connect while being socially distant. This time, by the way, we are gonna be doing democracy mode. Anarchy last uh, time was a uh, interesting experiment to say the least. <laughs> this time, by the way, I'm joined by Andrew Nathanson, hey, AKA Colorful Pockets. You want to give yourself a, a quick, you know, 10 second, 30 second introduction? Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm Andrew, also known as Colorful Pockets. You might know me from a YouTube channel that I haven't posted to in like a year, but hey, you never know. Maybe it'll happen again someday. Uh, <laughs> these days, I'm mostly a podcaster. I, I'm one of the hosts of the Layer by Layer podcast, and I've been doing a little bit of Twitch streaming as well. So that's me. So. We're excited to have him on. It should be a very fun hour. Chat, as always, if you guys have any questions, feel free to send them our way and we will get those answered. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we'd like to thank Rubik's for supporting us with Twitch Solves Rubik's Cube, as well as Lucas Garin for helping us with the software. So without further ado, let's get this event started with another Twitch Solves. Uh, good Go ahead, Mitch. All right. Okie dokie. So the stream is not going to be able to see the scramble, by the way. It is just us that get to see it. Okay. Oh, beautiful. S2 immediately applied. Oh, geez. <laughs> so <laughs> this might be a little bit hectic. <laughs> so this, this is democracy mode, right? So everyone This is democracy. Voting. People are voting. Got it. But... I think uh, it starts off with potentially whatever move was already in there. So Got it. S2 it is. Chat is going crazy, by the way. Yeah. R2 is... Wait, what? And R2 is applied. That's very strange. Anyway. <laughs> um, Orange cross looks easy, people are saying. Okay. I'm not quite sure. But... We will see whether or not Twitch is able to do it. Uh, but in the meantime, I wanted to ask you a little bit about some of the things that you've been doing aside from your YouTube channel that you were previously best known for, uh, yeah, most yeah. notably your podcast. Now, we've had Kit Clement here in the past, not for Twitch Solves, but for uh, a different feature that we had when we were doing a prediction bracket for our final uh, okay yeah right preseason competition about that yeah but but you know he he was on to talk about stats not about your guys's podcast <laughs> uh, so i i know i'm i'm curious what you think about it what so, sort of how you feel about your own podcast and i'm sure viewers would be interested as well sort of what's layer by layer about what what should people expect on that type of uh that type of podcast and and uh why is it interesting? Yeah, so Layer by Layer is um, it's a cubing podcast, at least ostensibly, um, as we say, because there's a lot of episodes where we don't end up talking about that much cubing, but um, most most of the time we are focused on cubing in some way. Um, we try to keep it just as whatever interests us. That way we can always keep it fresh. Um, we aren't like trying to do do anything that we aren't interested in, which is I feel like that's the best way to do a podcast. Mm -hmm. What makes it the most fun and most uh, best to watch. Um, but yeah, so yes. it's it's really it's kind of all over the place. It's hard to describe it succinctly. Uh, but we we talk about um, we well you know back when there was a lot more news, we would keep up with the news. Uh, we would um, we would talk about like various. Um, things to do with the mathematics of cubing occasionally that's one of the things we're uh kit has a little segment on on the podcast lately. I, I was listening to one of your recent episodes actually and you guys uh, started a discussion about seven by seven not even being able to to do random state on things like java 
right so, yeah just because of the limitations of the java um I believe, yeah i think it was java I, don't, I, I can't remember if it was java or javascript now but yeah i think it was java the java random engine um just doesn't have enough stuff for that doesn't doesn't have enough stuff because it's just such a, like combinatorics are crazy and just the seven by seven just gets so big yeah um, i mean with I 43 people in, chat, people in chat are asking my mic me to turn my mic up on uh I can't do that on my end, unfortunately. I don't know if thing we can do then. Yeah. <laughs> Give me one second. Unfortunately, my my mic is just a quiet mic. <laughs> um All right. That should get sorted out in just one second, but in the meantime. Uh, just tell Chad is also me. suggesting that I stop yelling. So if I whisper <laughs> really, really quietly, all right, maybe cool. we can yeah, get this to work. Normally, here. you whisper. Um, all right, <laughs> I'll do. Uh, I'll do ASMR mode. That's what's suggested down in chat right now. So <laughs> we will. Uh, we'll see, and we'll try to make sure that the audio levels are are nice and balanced. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at this cube right now, and even though we're doing democracy. It looks like no, he's gone. Hmm. Are we still on the on the stream? I hope so. Uh... I think we were for a second. We disappeared. Uh, Twitch solves is still going, hmm. which is good. Um. Can chat hear us? Chat, can you hear us? We disappeared. We are now the desktop. <laughs> but well. that should still be okay. <laughs> All right, chat can still hear us. So we are now an audio only. I think this makes us a true podcast. Yeah, I mean, this is what I'm comfortable with, honestly. <laughs> yes. Hello and welcome to the Twitch Solves podcast. I'm your host, Keaton Ellis. I mean, we can I'm, we can do that introduction right there. Yeah, and and I'm your host, Mitch's desktop background. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your favorite icon on his background that you can see? Oh Mine is Streamlabs. Oh, there we go. We're coming back. We're coming. Beautiful, back. Right. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. I I'm back <laughs> myself now, and now we have uh, we have video evidence of us. Yes. <laughs> we actually do exist. Um, yes. Yeah, so about this cube here, what are they doing? <laughs> what is Twitch I, doing? So I'm actually very confused. Uh, at some point, it looked like there were some moves on green or on, on white cross being done. But I'm not quite sure what cross color they're going for at this point. And I, yeah. I honestly have no idea. Uh, this is the yeah. least organized I've seen it probably since week one. <laughs> where the first time we did it, we started off by doing D2, D2, D2 mm -hmm. as like our first three moves. And there were a couple of Z2s in there as well. Nice. And I was telling the chat what to do up until a specific point where I was instructed not to tell the chat what to do. <laughs> and then as soon as I stopped telling chat what move to do, it all went downhill. And uh, the last layer was very difficult. So I have. Oh, man, I can I can only imagine. Uh, people are saying in chat that we should be using ZZ. Go so, for it. yeah, do it. <laughs> that that might be a little bit rough for the majority of chat that may not know what that is. But you use that, right? Yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, I'm a ZZ user. It's a method where you orient the edges first, and then you do some stuff that's kind of like CFOP, except you know there's minor differences. Uh, but the big thing is orienting the edges first, so that you can solve everything with R, U, L, and D. Uh, Which is ostensibly really good for one-handed solving as well, right? Yeah, that's. I, I, th I still think it's good for one-handed solving. I mean, these days I'm not so sure. Um, it's it's arguable whether or not like it has any merits over CFOP. I wouldn't. I really wouldn't recommend anybody go and learn it if you if you want to learn a speed solving method. Um, I'm pretty happy with it because, you, like, 
the met the techniques you need to learn for ZZ help you get better at fewest moves, which is my favorite mm. event. Um, so I'm pretty happy knowing it, and it's made me a lot better at fewest moves. But I would not recommend anyone learn it for speed solving in general. I just think you can do better with either Lu or Sifa. So I've got I've got two questions for you. One's about speed solving, and then the next is about FMC, which is an event that I'm aware that you're pretty good at and know a lot about. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that Rue is ZZ but backwards? Ooh, okay, hold on. Let me think about this. Because with Rue, you do the left and the right blocks first, and then you do yeah, the middle. That's true. And but with ZZ, you do the middle and then you do the left and the right i i can see it i don't know if i would say it's easy but backwards i would because easy but backwards that that feels to me like you're like solving the last layer first or something because <laughs> yeah. there, there's still zz is still much more of like a i mean you're still building like bigger blocks than you are with root Sure. Left and right block with Rue, but you aren't really. It has a very different feel at the end. Um, I, I could see, I see the comparison though, and I hadn't really thought of that before. That works. Uh, the other question that I had was about FMC, and that was about something that I'm not really familiar with and I'm sure that you know people in chat that may not be very in tune with the FMC world probably have heard of it but you know don't really know what it's about I've been hearing a lot about domino reduction now I know what a domino cube is that's the three by three by two yeah but how does this relate to FMC and is it good okay so I've also not practiced FMC in a little while here sure um so I'm not like super up to date on the latest cutting edge domino reduction methods. Sure. Although I was kind of, I was like very in tune with the, like what everybody's doing when domino reductions first started, like, like the mm -hmm. idea of them has been around for a long time. Uh, and th there was just kind of like a big FMC renaissance kind of lately where all of a sudden everybody started using them. And I was kind of there for the start of that. And then I dropped mm -hmm. off a little bit. Um, Fair. So I can't explain what they are. Um, you're basically, you want to reduce a three by three cube to a domino state uh, where, where it acts kind of like a domino cube. So um, like you were saying, it's a three by three by two. So imagine you just get rid of the middle layer. How would sure. you be able to turn it? It would be only with like R2, L2, F2, and B2. Uh, and then you can move the U and D layers however you want. Okay. Um, so you're you're restricted to those double moves on everything except the U and D layer, and of course it doesn't have to be like it could be the R and L layer. Like you can sure you can rotate yeah. or do whatever. Um, that's what a domino reduction is, and the reason that it's useful is that 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 move set is like necessarily pretty close to being solved. Um, mm -hmm. like if you just scramble your cube that way, you'll see it doesn't look very far away from being solved like ever. Um, I see, and that is how like scramble generators or like computer cube solvers um that's how they solve the cube and as you can tell by the length of the scrambles those are fairly efficient um mm -hmm. so it just is kind of an inherently in efficient way to solve the cube mm -hmm. um like if you had to pick any single method i think that's the best single method we know of obviously with fewest moves you want to be flexible and you want to be able to do a lot of different things um but as far as one single thing that can solve the cube First, uh -huh. reducing it to that state and then bringing it to solved is, um, but but reducing it—that's yeah. the thing that always gets me. Like once you get to domino, I'm like, oh, you're you're home free. Like it should yeah. be fairly easy. But getting to that is yeah. that is that really it's, that good? It, yeah. So it, it can take a while to get there. Um, the thing is, you kind of have to like try it a bunch of different ways. Um, mm -hmm. Like uh, just because. If you're trying to find always the shortest domino solution, you might mm -hmm. not be able to, and it might not even be that good. Um, okay. Um, so you just have to try a whole bunch of different things, and eventually one of them, you'll like see a bunch of different blocks that all come together. Um, it, it is quite difficult to actually do the domino reduction and wrap your head around that, because you have to be very comfortable with orienting the edges. Like I was saying, ZZ is good for that. Yeah. And you also have to be very comfortable with orienting corners. Um, but it's a different orientation, right? Like you're not doing 
you're not orienting edges in the sense that you have to put them in R L U D orientation. It's got to be domino orientation, which is right. an additional. I guess the way I, think, I usually think of it as doing um, the normal edge orientation, but on like two different faces at once um, for the edges. Okay. So kind of, most of the time you do it for one face and then you do it for the other face. And while you're doing it for the other face, you're also solving the, um, you're also orienting the corners. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, yeah. You just have to learn to recognize the different cases and... I feel like there's been some developments with that that I'm not even aware of. Like, I don't think everybody does that even exactly that way. I, people are definitely doing more advanced things where they're like doing edges and corners at the same time these days, but um, I'm, I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> that's, that's, that's nuts. I remember hearing a story about Harry Savage and his, I believe it was a, an 18 or a 17. I think it's 17. Yeah. 17 where he mentioned that, you know, he found an 11 move domino reduction and then he was just like, okay, let me go find optimal. Yeah. And, and that sort of, that thing to me, like, let me go find optimal, you know, coming from someone who does CFOP all the time and, you know, <laughs> is not even close to optimal. Who has a PB of, uh, or PR of 27 officially. It's like, that is so foreign to me that you can get that optimal results with that kind of thing. Do you... Yeah, well, with that solve specifically, I don't think it was 11 moves. I think it was like a nine move domino reduction or maybe okay. less than that. Um, I'm, I might be forgetting maybe... the specifics at this point. It's been a little while, but... Yeah, and there's certainly no guarantee that you're going to be able to find an optimal solution after you get to the domino state. Like, mm -hmm. it often feels like you're really close to that, but it's it's mm -hmm. it's easy to overestimate how easy that, like, getting from domino state to solved is. It's actually a lot harder than it's i mean obviously it doesn't seem like it's it would be easy to find um optimal mm -hmm. but i think a lot of people who are getting into fmc look at it and feel like getting to the domino state is the hard part um that's I that's like what i think of that's what i think yeah i think that that's actually getting to the domino state i think is actually fairly systematic and like once you've practiced okay. enough you can just kind of do it recognizing which domino states will lead you to a good solve and recognizing like and being able to get to a lot of different domino states that you can then find a good solution from one mm -hmm. that i feel like is actually the hard part so it's actually like really impressive that that would be harry savage's attitude going into it of like i found this good domino reduction let me find the optimal solution from here that that is not something i would usually that's not the way i would usually approach it <laughs> that's nuts that's that's just totally nuts to me but yeah <laughs> that's it, it's very interesting i think it's nuts I think so. Too. Uh, <laughs> As I said, I, I'm 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 definitely aware of all the stuff that people are doing now, but I'm mm -hmm. nowhere near the top of the FMC world anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't need to be the best in the world to be able to talk about it and know what's yeah, going on to be able to analyze it. So yeah, uh, we definitely value your knowledge and expertise in that field. As you know, especially me, who doesn't mm -hmm. have a, as good of a grasp on that kind of stuff. I'm looking at the cube right now. We are 65, maybe 66 moves in by the time yeah. I say that. Uh, looks like we've got cross. And we're almost done with the single F2L pair after 65 moves. Yeah, I mean, that's that's like a fewest moves solution, honestly. Uh, I think it's very efficient. <laughs> Back when we had the scramble on screen, chat was very, very efficient. In fact, <laughs> it was almost as if they were reversing the scramble completely. Oh, wow. Um, that would be... That, that's just some very... Are they doing ZZ, actually? Hold on. <laughs> Wait. No, I, I think there's one... Every there. edge is oriented. Hmm. So, they may not be doing, like... Intentionally. They may not intentionally be doing ZZ. <laughs> but they're doing ZZ. Hmm. <laughs> every single edge is oriented yeah and well it's not in the normal orientation right you'll either uh, do blue front white top yellow top blue front yellow top that, that's how most people learn it but i mean i'm i'm y-axis neutral for zz so i can do any any um mm -hmm. any front that isn't white or yellow well the thing that i i was I was good friends, I am good friends with Andy Huang, who was a big ZZ solver back in 2014. Uh, for those of you in chat who don't know, and 
he always mentioned he did blue front or red front. He did not go to orange or green. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so that kind of thing, like, is interesting to me as well. Just it's you know. it's very easy to get locked into. Um, and, and honestly, the way he does it is probably better because I often will get which side of the cube is which confused. Like I get what it's like. Like I, I get confused whether I'm doing blue or green front sometimes. So I'll like oh. solve orange pairs onto the left when I'm supposed to be solving them onto the right. I see. Uh, <laughs> so I can see why he would do that because there's so much about ZZ that's like all orientation based. So just having a natural intuition for that, mm -hmm. I feel like could be useful. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I feel like being flexible is probably more useful, but um, I can see how it would be very I, easy to get locked into something like that. I feel like it's sort of the difference between being white yellow on th on C FOP or you know mm -hmm. being color neutral that kind of thing, where you get the added flexibility, but you know your inspection changes a lot. And then ZZ, which is very inspection heavy with respect to needing to find all these edges and figure out how to you know get a, uh, a line while making these edges oriented efficiently maybe that's there's a different trade-off there yeah. but before we continue leo borromeo in chat like the leo uh okay. hi, hi andy in chat which is a very old meme yes it is uh, <laughs> so i'm very proud of leo right now i'm very happy and um if if chat wants to follow him you can type in hi andy with no capitals and you will be in on a six-year-old meme. Yes. It has nothing to do with me, by the way. Nobody calls me Andy. Uh, Correct. <laughs> this is We're talking about a different Andy here. However, it is a... I, I would say it's almost like a ZZ-related meme. Yeah. But... Oh, chat has switched to high Andy, and no one is saying any... <laughs> any uh any moves maybe it'll make it easier to solve the cube if <laughs> two people doing it <laughs> so there may be one uh, one move in there that maybe only one person voted for but um yeah it's easy is it's easy is very interesting uh, it's a weird method it's it's nice because you get like the cross at the end so like there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with the last layer um yeah that's the main upshot of it i think I know, so someone who's actually been taking advantage of that, I'm not sure if you're aware of Knut Skog Haraldsson, who is... Heard of him. Yeah, he's a Norwegian one-handed solver that learned full ZBLL. Okay. And yeah. also <laughs> full ZBLS. Ooh, that's... And so what he does is he just, you know, he gets the best of CFOP with all the rotations and the freedom that you get. Mm -hmm. And then he gets the best of sort of having an oriented cross with only one step, you know, the ZBLS itself, if it's not very good, being being troublesome. Yeah, so that's, that's, Canute that's, is <laughs> very interesting when it comes to you know applying last layer stuff in those types of situations. Yeah. I'm very slowly working on learning ZBLL myself. Uh me too, actually. It's going to be a long time before I get there. <laughs> I, I, so for me, what I've been trying to do is um, just like learn one or two algs a day. And especially with you cases uh, that have mirrors, I've been trying to, especially for the nine move COLL ones, I've been learning the mirrored algs at the same time. So I've been like going, instead of learning one COLL and switching the other, I've been going through all these mirrors. I don't know if that's going to help you at all. And I don't know if you're already done with you, but. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm working on T right now. Okay. Uh, do you actually like use mirrored algs or do you? No. Uh, so, not mirrored algs, but in the sense that uh, if an alg uses the front right slot for an RUD, for example, Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes the back right slot okay, for yeah. RUD also is a pretty good alg. Uh, there are yeah. some cases where I use completely different algs for the mirrors, uh, but a lot of them are using the front right slot or using the front or uh, the back right slot. Um, yeah, that, that makes sense. The, the way I've been going about it, I've been learning it more haphazardly and more slowly, yeah. probably. I've just been doing like one a week, um, which... It's very slow for me. I, I've, I've learned way more algorithms in the past at a time. But um, 
I've just been asking. By the way, I, I love how they've messed up EO now. I don't know what. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, dang it! Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been asking my Twitch chat on my Twitch streams that I do every week uh, for which alga I should learn, and then I just do whatever they tell me. Uh, so, <laughs> mm. so have... the reason I actually started learning you instead of something else was because there is a C O L L that I really hate. I'm sure you know which one I'm about to to show. It is by is it far and away, case, right? Huh? The U case. Yeah, the U case. I think I know one is. <laughs> it's this C O L L. I hate it. Yep, that's the one. You've got a uh, matching matching. Mm -hmm. Default algorithm is just horrible. Yeah, for a long time I just didn't do that C O L L. Uh, yeah, but but for me. Um, I'm not really good at doing the RUD, like COLLs. Uh, I'm like okay at it, but but not really good. So I was like, okay, I'm going to sit down and learn 12 ALGs in one sitting. And that's how I just started. And then at that point, I'm like, I should just use the rest of you. I should just learn it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I said that four years ago, and I'm almost done with you. So. Okay, it's progress. <laughs> yeah. But but for me, it was find the COLLs that you don't like for the cases that you're not very good at. That's a good approach. Start with those. And then from there, go through. And this is probably not the best way to do it. There's probably like, I don't know. If you go and you get a cube coaching service, you can probably find like an objectively optimal best way to do it. But... I'm sure it'll be. Uh, I, I mean, I, I feel like that's that might be one of the best ways to do it because then you're you're taking your worst cases and you're turning them yeah. into your best cases. So yeah, like I think really it, improving on the things your solves need the most in some sense. Yeah, maybe it's it's best to do that, but not like um, you know, learn one U case and then learn one T case and then learn one H case yeah. and stuff like that. Be a bit Probably better. best to do, mm -hmm. you know. Learn the bad U ones and then finish U and then learn the bad T ones and finish T. But like most yeah, of yeah. E is fine. And the T alg, like the default wide sexy sledge, super fast compared to the RUD nine mover, in my opinion. Hmm. I don't know. So. If I... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they're, they're all pretty fast. <laughs> true. True, true, true. Uh, we got raided by Brody the Cuber. So. Thanks to Brody for the 15 viewer raid. Really appreciate it. And hello, Brody. I'm trying to be nice and quiet and mellow so that the sound level of me <laughs> appropriately matches Andrew's sound level. I did see Mitch turn it up a little bit, so it should be less bad now, but... Yes, uh... but, but my default setting as a person is loud. Like that is just my <laughs> default, like how I am. I'm just very loud, so I need to like rein it in so that we're at an appropriate level and it works out. Let me see, I see. <laughs> but while we're finishing up our F2L and moving on to OLL, guys, if you have any questions in chat, any dying things to ask uh, Colorful Pockets Andrew here, uh, please feel free to send them our way. That is my full name. Uh. <laughs> Your, your first name is Colorful Pockets and your middle yeah. name is Andrew. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> All right. Um, I feel like, I feel like, um, they've been working on the F12 to OLL transition for quite a while now. <laughs> I think they've just been slowly doing F2L pairs. Yeah. I know that. <laughs> I've noticed that the front one was done for a little while, but the back right, the green, red, that one took that one took a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to know when I'm coming back to uh, YouTube. I don't really have a good answer for that. It's just not what's interesting me at the moment. Uh, but I certainly am not ruling it out. I might be back at some point. Uh, so maybe a good question there as a follow-up is... Uh, 
what is interesting you nowadays? Yeah, so for anyone who doesn't know about it, uh, check out my podcast, Layer by Layer, that I do with Kit Clement. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that has similar energy to some of my videos. Uh, it's not like skit based or anything, so it's obviously different from that, but it's still fun. Uh, <laughs> and my Twitch stream, also fun. Uh, I've had lots of guests on, like Heaton Ellis. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the Pockets show is something that occurs every Friday starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific time and goes for two ish hours, right? Yeah, usually about two hours. Um, sometimes that'll just be me doing cubing stuff on my own and talk, talking to chat. Sometimes it's me with a guest or two. Mm -hmm. um, I often will debut the various random new fun events that Kit and I come up with on our podcast. I'll usually do some of those on stream. Uh, we have this thing on layer by layer where we invent new cubing events. Uh, so what's the most the recent one? one? Uh, let's see. The, the most recent one I invented. Uh, well, what was it? Oh, it was um, speed running the GoCube tutorial. Uh, <laughs> In the GoCube app, it has like a thing that teaches you how to solve the cube. Yeah. And Kit and I are, or Kit more than me, but mostly, uh, but we're both kind of into speed running. So I was like, why don't we speed run this tutorial? Um, <laughs> That's great. Yeah. What's uh, what's world record on that right now? Uh, I think Kit got it down to like a three minute fourteen or something. Uh, I, we haven't recorded the next episode, so he hasn't reported his results to me, but I, he said something like that. Um, Wait, so this is a tutorial to teach you how to solve the yes. cube, right? <laughs> so, yes. like, it's live updating the software as you're solving the cube yourself? Yeah, so it's using the GoCube, which, like, tracks mm -hmm. your rotations and moves. Um, mm -hmm. And we basically, we spent a while, like, figuring out the best route through the tutorial because there are certain things where... <laughs> Um, if you like, we basically just said like, you have to go through every step of the, okay. of the tutorial because it's in a bunch of different steps. You have to go through okay. each one and you're only allowed to apply moves before you start the whole attempt. Like you scramble the cube. And then other than that, you're only allowed to apply moves, um, within like the tutorial section, not on the menu screen because it's not tracking your moves on the menu screen. Um, okay. So you have to follow the tutorial when it's telling you to do the R and do the U and do whatever? Yeah. What awesome. we discovered is that there's a couple locations in the tutorial where you're allowed to freely do moves as long as you don't hit certain states on the cube. Like when you're learning to solve cross, as long as you don't actually solve like a daisy, you know, where it's got like the yellow side with all the white edges around it. As long as you don't hit a daisy state, you can do whatever moves you want. So we basically figured out the optimal scramble for solving the rest of the tutorial and then you would <laughs> use the daisy step to set up to that scramble <laughs> <laughs> wait so it, it doesn't give you a scramble to start it just assumes that you have oh yeah, that makes sense because at, at the start of the tutorial it's like do a few moves to shuffle your cube but kit and i decided that it would be fun to like treat it like a cubing event and just like have our own scramble from outside uh wait so, so then like optimal strategy would just be to like set up this right uh, let me see. Empty? Um, not quite. So, they... because okay. there are actually there are certain steps in the solve where if you come into it where you've already solved that step, it yeah. will have you scramble to no. get to a point where you can then learn that step. Okay. Um, so we figured out the optimal route that we have to do as little actual solving or scrambling. You basically you set up to like, um. You do like a U perm, then you remove an edge, then you remove a corner, and that allows you to skip over, like do the minimal work for every step, basically. Okay, and then you do like an F two to get. Uh, oh yeah, and then get... you like take out all the cross edges or something. I f I forget exactly. Like, it's... but there's just <laughs> that's okay. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah, there's a you specific, have a specific thing state. like within within the app itself that is exactly what you want to be doing. <laughs> Gotcha. We, we routed it out basically, like you would route out a speed a speed run. That's pretty cool. Looks like the cube is almost yeah, almost done here. I was actually very surprised at how well they handled that GC perm. Yeah. <laughs> the the first time we did this, we had an L perm, okay. and that was a nightmare, an absolute <laughs> nightmare getting it done, because there are multiple algs for that. Yeah. Uh, 
What? I, what are they, wait, what's happening now? Hold up. Hold up. Abort mission. <laughs> Come back, guys. We're almost there. We may have spoken too soon. <laughs> wait. Am I forgetting my GC perm now? No, I don't know. This doesn't look right to me. <laughs> wait, no, it is right. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think. Such a confusing looking alg. Oh, okay. I see what's happening now. Yeah, that, I guess yep. that's right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. Not crazy. Just <laughs> 133 moves in. You know, you start to get a little bit tired doing all those turns. <laughs> Typing on the keyboard. Yeah. Okay. Okie doke. So we are almost done with this attempt right here. Uh, and we are going to be moving on to a second attempt with a longer voting period. All right. And we, we've done it. Well, almost very close. <laughs> Oh, chat knows exactly what to do on the last one. That's there great. we go. It is solved. Congratulations, chat. All right. One thing I've always been like very curious about is is whether or not people want to do like crazy troll stuff on the last move. <laughs> yeah. Like you're one move away, but all of chat just decides to do an S2. I've been very <laughs> impressed about the fact that they have never done that. We've, you know, whenever they're close, enough people just want to see it solved that they refuse to. I feel like, to I feel like there's. It, like they'd have to agree ahead of time on which move they're doing to troll otherwise they'd be all over the place and then the people who want to solve it would override them by all agreeing on the same thing my understanding is that the move s2 is a hundred percent the troll move and that okay. if people want to be trolling and just doing stuff they should be doing s2 <laughs> oh no We're going which to i'm now. totally not <laughs> saying this to tell chat to you know, this is like you know when you're in finding nemo and you're being told to swim down but that's the correct thing to do. I'm telling you to swim left or something like that. <laughs> but but S2 is S2 is the move, guys. It is. <laughs> uh, Leo is asking in chat whether or not you still do any one-handed solving. Um I will warm up for one-handed at a competition and then compete in it. And I usually am if I warm up enough, I can get to, or well, warm up the right amount. It's not really enough because if I warm up too much, I tire, tire out my hand. Uh, <laughs> oh, were we gone? Or oh, is the cube back? Okay. Uh, the cube. <laughs> got it. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of do one handed still. I don't practice it though. Um, I, I've been meaning to get back into it though because it's a fun event. Yeah. One handed is something, at least for me, that. I, I love doing it personally, but in 2017, I, I was something similar. I just didn't practice it. I had hit like a level that I was satisfied with. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, it hurts. My hand takes a long time to warm up, that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, I, I kind of got to the point where um, like I made one-handed finals at US Nationals a couple times. Um, and then Max Park was in southern california and he was better at everything so it was just it was harder to find the motivation to practice when i couldn't be on top of local competitions anymore uh, yeah i uh, uh i won nats 2015 and then i got third at nats 2016 and then i did not go to nationals for two years and in nats 2019 i found myself not even making finals for one handed <laughs> that said i ran the competition so i have a slight excuse there but yeah <laughs> Uh, there was a a big shock of like oh my goodness also the screen was really easy uh, they had uh chat had essentially like super easy cross it's all that but do you, they, do you think do you think mitch set this up <laughs> i'm not sure if mitch set it up but they uh just did an extra z2 to go downstairs so I guess we are going to have to wait a minute. Interesting. How do they agree to do that? 
The extended voting period, I believe, uh, makes moves. Like, chat is a little bit behind the... Um, a little bit behind the rest of it, or behind the solve itself. So they're sending moves in, but they're seeing a state in the past. So sometimes that happens. I see. That does happen. <laughs> they did miss the pseudo, or they did miss the X cross though, where they just needed to insert a single corner because the edge is already in the slot. Oh, I see that. But they're, they're still getting there. They'll be okay. looks relatively quite easy <laughs> yeah like i'm i'm feeling this is going to be one of the best scrambles that's that's been seen here uh, there have been some that were fairly efficient in the past but has there ever been a time when some like some fmc has just gone in chat and like done a full fmc solve and then directed chat around and gotten them to do exactly that not exactly um when we like i was saying earlier when we did have the scramble on screen uh, what we did was we showed people the scramble mm -hmm. and then they like and then we took it away so initially we showed it to them and they completely reversed it and then we showed them the scramble and then took it away but everyone had taken a screenshot or, or copied and pasted it or something or just paused the video from earlier and then also still completely undid the scramble. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't have any FMC experts guiding the chat, but there is FMC at this competition. So mm -hmm. maybe we'll see whether or not any of these people will have any suggestions for for how <laughs> Twitch solves could be uh, yeah. more efficient in their in their solutions. Although this is a 13 move solution and we're about to finish second pair. And then it's good. going to be a four move third pair. Oh my goodness. This is super easy with oriented cross after the fourth pair. <laughs> wow. I'm waiting for this to be a last layer skip or something it's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's the type of luck that we're going to see in this situation. <sighs> so. I'm gonna guess like OLL skip T perm or something. <laughs> Not that a T perm is necessarily fast with uh, this method of solving the cube. <laughs> I think the the quintessential scramble, like rigged scramble, is like OLL skip a triple X cross OLL skip J perm. Oh, okay, yeah, that's that's good. I'm sure if you, I'm sure you uh, you've been around long enough to know where that scramble is coming from. Yeah, we're definitely having a lot of blocks in the last layer here. If you look at it. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're going to get that blue, red, yellow block, though, because that last edge is currently in the back left slot. So, yeah. But still, uh, it's not going to be an OLL skip if we're doing the moves that I'm thinking about. Uh, but it should still be very good. Yeah. Might have to do another one after this. <laughs> That's nuts. People are saying uh, it's going to be a, a nice winner variation. Hmm. Okay. I guess that works out. Yeah. Perhaps someone has uh, been seeing the future here. Oh, this is a case where you can do like an anti soon. Oh, upon finishing the slot. And then you have uh, ZZCT. <laughs> yeah, one corner oriented up on top. Yeah. All the other. You know. And then you just have to do a TTLL to finish that. If, if any of that how works. how good is that Alex set, by the way? I I know that's I, how you set it up. Like you have to have one corner oriented up. But well, you you basically you have to orient all. It's actually doing ZZCT is just doing a domino reduction at the end of your solve to bring it back to what we were talking about right at the start sure. of this whole thing. Uh -huh. Um. Uh, I don't know what the algs are like these days. I know people have improved them a lot. Uh, I haven't been following it. Um, I'm subscribed that people are. I see the word subscribed in the chat. And I just <laughs> had like a Freudian slip there. I'm surprised that people are still using it, actually. 
yeah, there's a few people who still use it. Um, I think it's 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 a really interesting method because it's all based on the idea of like maximizing the amount you can get lucky mm -hmm. in the solve. Um, so it's not like a traditional speed solving method where it's trying to get as fast as you can every single solve. It's just trying to make it so that you can force last layer skips like a pretty good amount of the time, <laughs> um, which is interesting. Is the setup any good for it? Basically, yeah, at the. When you get to last slot, you have to. I mean, first of all, you have to be doing ZZ, which is already a strike against it because ZZ is not that great. Uh, um, and then you like get to last slot and you have to do some fairly easy. Uh, like getting. Yeah, it, it, it's not that hard. You set up to. You just orient the corners as you're inserting your last pair. Um, except it's not a it's not a last pair, so it's it's not like you have to learn full it's a VLS fake or last anything. Pair. Yeah, it's a fake last pair. You're just orienting. Oh, so, you, so you're just going to do a winner variation with the fake last pair? Kinda, yeah. Is it good uh, as like a companion method to standard last layer? Where yes, definitely is. Okay, um, I see. Like the st the stuff I learned from using ZZCT has made me a much better solver. Um, I for I force a lot of OLL skips now. Um, okay. And there are a couple cases that I still remember from TTLL that I can still use and sometimes force and apply in a solve. So it'll be like there there will be solves where I just um like I realize all my edges are solved and I just solve the corners with some commutators or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've learned to recognize that quickly from learning TTLL. We have an interesting case here with this cube. Mm -hmm. There are two twisted corners, and that's it. Oh, the rest of it's done. I'm very Inter interested. Method time. <laughs> I'm very interested to see what Chad does. I want them to do. Be oh, beginner's method would be fun. We'll sit here and do. Um, mm -hmm. Beginner's method is 24 moves plus. A D and a D prime, it'd be 26 additional moves from this point. <laughs> I mean, I know the ZBLL case. <laughs> That's one of the ZBs that I also know. I know all the twisted corner cases for ZBs. Oh, really? I don't know all of them. Uh, I well, no, I, I don't know soon and anti soon. Okay, I just yeah, do soon U perm. Either. It's like an ALG. <laughs> That's kind of cheating. It's kind of cheating. Yeah, I know a four gen ALG for this case, even though you can solve it two gen. <laughs> Four gen. Yeah, are you FD? Okay, I actually know a four gen alg for the uh, the opposite oh. twisted corners, like the L case. Oh, okay. So I'm no longer surprised. I'm pretty sure whatever you would be doing would be like some sort of cancellation into that. Yeah, it, uh, the the cases for most of the, the twisted corner cases are just comms canceled into each other. Yeah. It's optimal though, right? Uh I don't think what I'm doing is optimal. It's it's probably a few moves off optimal. Actually, I feel like you might enjoy um where I learned this L alg. I learned optimal mm -hmm. two twisted corners. Because right before FMC USA 2014, mm -hmm. I did a practice solve. And I had two twisted corners like that. And I was like, I need to know that optimal alg in case in case I get it in competition. So I learned it. Yep. And lo and behold, I did not get a sub 30. So maybe <laughs> that, that there's is, something you said there. That is by no means the best way to solve two twisted corners in FMC. <laughs> well... There was no really good FMC solver at our site, so <laughs> you're gonna have to forgive me. That just that hurts. That hurts me to hear that because you can solve two twisted corners. You can cancel like you you can add like one move to your solution to bring it to three like a, a corner com. A sure. Single corner com. <laughs> Most uh, of the time. I I know, dude. <laughs> I I don't mean to hurt you. I don't mean to break you, but. But I just had to be honest with you and, and tell it to you straight. <laughs>
but FMC back in the day was, was very different than what it is right now. You could get a world record with last layer skips mm -hmm. or be very scary at nationals with the last layer skip. You know, the, the think... first uh, 19 that Tim Wong got, I was there at the, the competition. Uh, I had the same first nine. That was my first time ever doing FMC in my life. I had the same first nine moves as him, and he just yeah. found a way to force a last layer skip. And instead, I did like CFOP. <laughs> well, I think he actually did do CFOP for the solution, right? And he ends up doing an, uh, a corner insertion, which ended up just being a Niklaus, right? Yeah, he basically, he did CFOP and then realized at the end of the solve, he could cancel like five moves into a Niklaus. <laughs> By the way, is this cube about to be solved that we're looking at here? I think it is. The Twisted wow. Corners, they did optimal alg for it. Nice. <laughs> or not optimal, but they did anti-soon, anti-soon. Okay, yeah, that's a good so, alg. Very, very good. Very, very efficient. I'm proud of chat for this one. The first one was yeah. a very big struggle. This, and this, one, one, this was like shorter than most people's normal speed solve solutions. Almost guaranteed shorter than most normal speed solve solutions. Yeah. So... One of the things that we're going to be doing on stream today is reconstructing some of the solves from round one. And I okay. guarantee you that every single solve that we look mm -hmm. at is going to be more than 46 moves. That is one thing with ZZ. ZZ gets you some short solutions a lot of the time. That's one of the nice things about it, right? Yeah. Like if, if I'm if I'm really concentrating, if, I, if I'm going like slightly slower than a normal speed solve, I can pretty easily get in like the 45-ish move range on on a normal speed self. That's pretty good. Yeah, with Rue, uh, I've been doing a lot of practice with that, even though it's not my main method. Uh, and I know that you can get, you know, 35 to 40 move solutions on that and be very, very efficient. Mm -hmm. So that kind of stuff is, is pretty nuts. But Chad actually did a ZBLO. The yeah. first time we did this, there were so many chances for them to cancel into a ZBLL or like yeah, it was canceled into a ZBLL, which was the thing that I was trying to get Chad to do. And they <laughs> could not do that. And this time they were able to do it. So I'm very proud of Chad for being able to. Good job, Chad. Very, for being able to do that. <laughs> but at this stage, uh, we're probably going to, to wrap this up right about now. All right. So, Andrew, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on for the last hour. I can say the same. I appreciate the fact that you woke up extra early. I as know, a, it's so early. <laughs> as a, someone who lives on the West Coast, I'm sure that you, uh, you sacrificed a lot. We thank you for that, for getting up early for this. Uh, it's a living. And by that, I mean I'm not being paid. Uh, <laughs> well, none of us really are, except uh, for people who are winning this. So we're, uh, we're happy to run this and, and put this on for them. And we're happy that you came on. Uh, yeah, thank you. For if people me. are interested in hearing you a little bit more, talking either to you directly or sort of you know, hearing your podcast skills more, uh, what sort of places should they be looking? Uh, they should be looking for the layer by layer podcast. Um, as far as how to get to that, I could give you a link, but really just look in any podcast player or Google it or whatever. Um, and they should be going to twitch.tv slash colorful pockets as well. I stream there every Friday. Awesome. Layer by layer podcast. Do you guys have a, a subreddit or anything? We do. You, guys... you can go to the subreddit.com slash r slash layer by layer. I should not do that on stream. Uh, go to reddit.com slash <laughs> r slash layer by layer. Um, there's a thing on the podcast where I always make up fake URLs for our, our subreddit. Um, <laughs> I but tried yes. to walk you into that one right there. <laughs> uh, we do have a we do have a real subreddit where you can go to discuss it as well. <laughs> yeah, so feel free to check out Andrew's stuff, both the layer by layer podcast as well as his own personal streaming on twitch.tv slash colorful pockets. Andrew, thank you so much for being on for this past hour. And yeah, uh, thank you. hope to talk to you soon, dude. I'll talk to you later, Keaton. All right, we'll be back.
Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cubing at Home 1.2, the second competition of our first season. I'm your host, Keaton Ellis, and we're excited to have another exciting day of competing for you guys. Well, kind of. We already started competing last night with FMC, the first time that we've done that here at Cubing at Home. And as soon as we're done with this, we'll be bringing it over to discuss some of the top level solvers and their solutions for the event. Otherwise, uh, we're excited to have another really fun day of competing for you guys. As always, we wanna make sure that you guys are aware of the prizes for this competition and our sponsors who have been doing excellent work helping us both financially, but also behind the scenes with tons of help with graphics, as well as letting us steal their CEO, uh, their CEOs. So Rubix is again providing $5,000 in prize money for the top 12 competitors at the end of the season with the leaderboard, which we'll get to at the end of this segment. But we also have the cubicle providing prizes for everyone who, who competes. In the stream chat today, we'll be giving away gift cards all day long, as well as if you compete in every single cubing at home, you'll be getting a guaranteed cubicle.com gift card. So make sure you compete and stay tuned for that. They'll also be giving a discount code for this competition, which is HOME 1.2, which you can access using exclamation point discount. That gives you 10% off for today only, which means that you want to, if you want to be getting puzzles, supplies, lubricants, timers, whatever you need, you've got to use it today. 10% off HOME 1.2. We'll also be giving away some gift cards in our caster versus analyst versus trivia uh, chat trivia competition on the schedule. It's called cubing trivia with chat in uh, approximately an hour. Every time chat wins a trivia question, you guys are going to be get uh, getting gift cards in chat. We'll be doing away giveaways every single time chat gets these trivia questions correct. So stay tuned for that and stick around because that should be a very fun and exciting event that we're going to be doing. I want to give you guys a quick run through of how this competition is going to work. As always, for all of you who have uh, are joining us for the very first time or may have forgotten the rules since last time, once a round opens, scrambles will be available at the website. You can go and click on the compete tab and the ro open rounds will be at the top and you can click on them. You apply the scramble and you complete the solve as you would uh, with WCA regulations being followed as closely as possible. So try, try, try to use a stack mat timer, or if you can't, if you don't have one, uh, try and make sure that you're not holding the cube in your hands while you're starting and stopping the timer. And make sure you're using an inspection tool. CS timer it has a built-in one, uh, but you can also use cubing.net slash inspection if you're using a stack mat timer, for example. As always, you're going to be entering your times in the standard minutes seconds, cent seconds format that you're very familiar with. Uh, and this time we took feedback from the last competition. Instead of being able to press enter through it, you also have to click a button that says this time is the correct time and I'm certifying that. That way we don't have anyone accidentally misclicking the enter button double, double entering times. Rounds are gonna be ending on time, the scheduled time. So make sure that you start when the event is open and then you enter your times as quickly as possible. For those of you who are very interested and are close to the top 12, we do ask that before you start recording any of your solves, you uh, before you start attempting any of your solves, you press record before you click the begin attempt button. Please make sure that you're doing that, especially, especially, especially if you are eligible for prizes for these competitions. Speaking of prizes, in addition to our season long leaderboard prizes, we also have prizes for every single individual competition, thanks to the cubicle. For side events, we'll have 15, 12, and $10 gift cards for first, second, and third place. And for the main event, three by three, we'll have 45, 40, and $35 gift cards. So big shout out to the cubicle for not only helping all of you guys out with gift card giveaways throughout this entire season of cubing at home, but also making sure that every competition, people walk away with a nice prize. Also, we'd like to thank Cubing USA at this time. Cubing USA is the Twitch channel that we're hosting this on, but it's also a nonprofit organization in the United States dedicated to promoting cubing. They're best known for some of the largest competitions in the world, including Cubing USA Nationals, which happens most years. So big shout out to them. Thanks so much for helping us 
behind the scenes. Without further ado at this time, we'd like to go and show you guys the leaderboards. So right now we've got our uh, seventh through 12th place here. So in 12th place, we've got Roe Hessler with 110 points. Samir Agarwal, Ray Bai, Daniel Goodman are all very close to each other at 150 or 155 points. And then we've got Leo Borromeo and Max Schau, both with 160. You'll see both of those two on stream later. Leo for 3x3 and Max Schau for 4x4. Moving on to our top six, we've got a really close top six right here. The difference between sixth place and first place is only 10 points, which is just the amount of points you get for just participating in any competition. So Patrick is in sixth right now with 180. And tied for second place, there are four. Joaquin Hernandez, Braden Richards, Aiden Bartlett, and Kieran Bihan. So all these guys are very, very close, but just edging them out right now is Timon Kolashinsky with a 190-point total. You guys can always access the leaderboard on our website. You can go to the results page, results.cubingathome.com. You can click View Current Season Leaderboard, or in just a minute, exclamation point leaderboard in chat will get you straight to the leaderboard and you can see who is at the top and who is chasing that grand prize of $2,000. But without further ado, we are going to be gearing up here for the start of Cubing at Home 1.2. We're really happy to have you guys here. We've got a really exciting list of people. We're going to be starting with our FMC exhibition, but after that, 3x3 is going to be opening up for all of you who are really anticipating that. So without further ado, we'll be right back with a 3x3 FMC exhibition.
All righty. I guess we're live. I'm expected, usually expected to be the person who like is introduced, but I guess I am introducing here the uh, top two uh, FMC solvers from yesterday. We have uh, Christopher Chi and James Quinn. Uh, we're going to talk about their FMC solutions. Um, so let's talk about Scramble One first, because I think that Scramble One was, um, for me at least personally, was kind of a tease. Uh, it looked really good, and obviously it was very good for you, Chris, and James didn't do as well on it. But um, do we, Chris, do you want to start talking about uh, what you did on this one? Uh, yeah, sure. So like going into the attempt, like a couple of my friends had said like they'd struggled really hard in the Scramble. So like, I don't know, I, I wasn't really sure what to expect, but like, um, so one of the first things I noticed was like, uh, I guess I'll just go into my solution. So like on inverse, um, there's a two of you on white front because there's three bad edges here and then the fourth one's here. So it's just du to solve EO. Um, then from here, after DO, most of the time nowadays I look for DR. So um, mm -hmm. I noticed that on red front at this point, there's also four bad edges, but um, there's only two oriented corners. So to fix that, I noticed that there's these two bad edges here. So I could do an L move and it'll stay at four bad edges. And if I do a B before that, there's these two corners here that'll get oriented and then these two will just stay misoriented. So BL leaves DR minus 44C, which is a one, uh, can be a setup to one move. <clears throat> then I switch to normal. And from here, it's pretty simple to see. There's this, mm -hmm. there's this one by three line over here. And then, uh, there's this pair over here and the last corner is over here. So if you just do a U2, you mm -hmm. get your two one by three lines for DR. And the two edges are conveniently on the L face already. So I did B2 F prime L. And then that leaves DR. And if you notice, the corners are good, too, because you can solve them pretty easily, like nice. that or something. Uh, yeah, it seemed, it so, seemed too, that this this uh, DR step, you I think you might have been the only person to have this one. Uh, no, Kale actually had this, but he... Oh, Kale had, had it, too? Okay, one. got it. Yeah. Yeah. So, Definitely yeah. not a... Like it, 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 the, I mean, it's a very good DR. Get, eight moves, I imagine. I, I'm not a great DR solver by any means, but eight moves is definitely a pretty strong DR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially with with good corners. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, sorry if I interrupted you. Feel free to keep going. <laughs> no, that's fine. So, so from here, um, I couldn't find any good like blocks or corner solutions to leave um mm -hmm. some edge skeleton so i went to look for htr uh so i switched back to inverse and the first thing i noticed was um r2 uh what did it do r2 b prime uh orients all the corners and leaves htr minus four edges um so they're here and there and then from here i did um l2 to set it up so that these two are here and these two are mm -hmm. here and then you can do uh this b prime e2 b prime thing to, to get to HTR, but nice. this wasn't that good. So I, I, I instead of doing, uh, let me figure out what it is. Okay. So instead of doing that, I did a trick that Tommy Caprillus taught me where in getting to HTR, you can make some of the moves into wide moves and it, uh, it'll still get to HTR, but the blocks will be different. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing, so I did an R2 and instead of doing a B prime, I did a wide B prime and then, hmm. uh, and then it's, L2 and then a wide B prime again, U2 D2 F prime. Whoa. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure that, I understood that's... anything that just happened there, but <laughs> yeah, basically, basically you just, in getting to HTR, sometimes you can make a couple of the moves into wide moves and it'll still get to HTR. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Different blocks. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, for those in chat, HTR here... is basically a step where you, re it's called half turn reduction. So, you you get it to a state in the, for the where the cube can solve be solved by only half turns like U two R two etc. Yeah, and then from here there's a pretty simple finish. So I I connected uh, this pair with this edge for a square, and then I made the two by two, and then from here it's just <laughs> four, uh, four moves. So that was yeah that was a eight move DR giving a fifteen move HTR and then a seven move finish for a twenty two. Awesome. All righty. Uh, well, in the interest of time, James, maybe we'll pass on your solution to one. Um, but let's, James, how about you talk about what you did on uh, Scramble 2? Okay, so Scramble 2 was four bad edges on 
green front, two were on the green face on normal. I think two were on the back. One was up there in the back. Yeah, th those yeah, are locations. That familiar. There's not any real. There wasn't any. There's like a. There's a form of way of solving this, but it wasn't the best. I actually, mm -hmm. I didn't normal, which keeps it at four bad. Um, it is basically just like doing a move just to see what happens when you switch. Right. And um, I did F prime. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, that's, switch. A, that's a pretty nice technique. I've been trying to do more to try to like set up my edges um, for like a nice EO on the other scramble. Yeah, and that's exactly what it did. Uh, there's two edges right there and two right there when you switch. So U L two B. Um, EO. Um, and then so this EO was on white yellow, so mm -hmm. I don't remember. It's like five corners and six edges that are currently not solved. If you do an L, it's DR minus 4E4C, or no, 2E4C, which can be solved with going up to RU2R prime, which is what I did. I did E prime with these two corners and then R2. Um, which pairs up this line in this corner like this. You want? Gotcha. You two prime tenders. And that could be nice corners. Um, just you R two solves the corners. Um, I didn't find anything too good off of directly solving corners. Um, so I actually switched. Mm -hmm. Did half turn reduction. Um, half turn reduction here is also two e four c line in those. Unfortunately, the edge isn't in the best spot. Mm -hmm. I did L2, like making this thing L2, F2, L2. Um, and that set up, that made the line and this line right here. And then I think I did, I did this one with D moves, D prime, L2, D prime. Um, the, there's no like, and then that's hotter in 18 moves. Um, I think I could have done this a different way to find my solution directly, but I didn't. And then, what did I do here? Oh yeah, so here I did L2 first. That puts this edge, this, this pair, and this pair like this, which can be solved with then with R2, B2, L2 to make this 1 by 2 by 3. <laughs> nice. F2, B2 makes um, B2E e in 23 moves. Um, so this 2 e 2 e case can be solved like this, normally starting off with D2B2. Um, and D2 was the previous, the last move that I did. Um, I changed that B2 into a wide B2, so F2, um, to cancel more, because that was my previous thing. And the previous move was L2, and I think I could have done something wide with that, but I decided to just leave it, and I could deal with it with slicing insertions later. So then I did R2. To R2, F2, E2, L2, just to finish out the um, solution. That was 27 moves. Um, I got kind of lucky with slices here. Um, gotcha. Yes, yeah, so this is kind of the stuff where you find a solution and then basically try to like substitute moves in your solution such that you can make like cancel them out and make them shorter. I inserted, I had L2, R2 in my solution. At one point, it was L2, R2, B2, L2, R2. Oh, I essentially yeah. in, inserted two slices. It was essentially just an F2. I just changed that. <laughs> for the, um, and then I inserted two more slices later to solve. And that, and that left me with 23 to 2E, different 23 to 2E, 2E. Which, mm -hmm. if you inserted that, I could have seen a 6 minus 6 insertion. Um, <laughs> at that point, it was like... Beautiful. Was, like this. Um, I actually I inserted, I inserted two slices, which actually was like a six minus five. So then I had mm -hmm. to slice one more move to a twenty three. Very cool stuff. Yeah, that's that, that's one of the really powerful things about DR, especially when you're doing you know so many um, two edge two edge swaps. Like if anyone here has ever spammed like R two U two uh, on their cube and notice you get to a point where you swap like two pairs of edges. Um, DR makes it very easy to, you know, switch edges in that sort of arrangement. Um, and that's pretty cool that you could, I, I don't think I've seen a 27 get reduced to a 23 before, but probably because I haven't done enough DR myself. Uh, so interesting, Chris, you also did a four move EO by doing an F move, uh, first, but you did F instead of F prime and, uh, kind of led you on a totally different path. You want to talk about what you did a bit? 
Uh, sure. So I did, I did the same S thing as James, and then uh, on inverse on inverse, uh, since the four batteries are in these spots now, or no, it's uh, they're in these spots. Sorry, I did L prime U B to Selvio, and then which leaves um, which leaves dr minus four e four c with red front. Um, because four corners misoriented and four edges. And then I switched mm -hmm. to normal after that. Uh, so I switched to normal, did the F move, and then uh, this. So getting to DR from here, I, I did U prime F2 to sort of move this pair out of the way from down here so I can match gotcha. the corner up with it. Mm -hmm. And then that, that brings the other corner down here, which can be matched with this pair. So F2, L2, F2, um, DR to finish DR. And then I switched back to inverse. And then on inverse, um, I did D prime. So uh, D prime R2 makes this square over here and also starts solving the corners because now we have this sort of opposite th bar thing and this one and you can like mash the corners up and then you'll have uh, sort of an opposite swap thingy. And then, so from here, I, I wanted to solve the corners. So uh, instead of matching like these up and then uh, doing sort of like that to solve the corners, I did a U prime F2, which sets up uh, this case. So, mm -hmm. and then R2, R2 D prime B2 sort of like solves this huge block over here. And then <laughs> D2 F2 leaves 2E2E two e in 19 Oh, moves. nice. And then uh, in the skeleton, at one point in the skeleton, I had this case, which is a nice right. six move case. And instead of just doing the R two B two solution. Mm -hmm. I did I did an alternate out for it, which was F two, L two B two, L two F two R two. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then so that ends with F two R two, and my next two moves were R two F two. So it, just, it was a six minus four, which was pretty lucky that gave it twenty one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and that's that case I was mentioning earlier that that like you probably even if you don't do FMC, it's probably a case you've done by just spamming like two gen half turns like R two U two or something. Yeah. Um, and domino reaction just really uh, is prone to making those sorts of cases happen. Uh, some people have asked what DR is in the chat, and it's uh, or domino reduction is, and uh, just to explain it a little bit, and feel free to add in as need be. But um, it's essentially where you get it to a state where the cube can be solved um, by doing half turns on uh, only on. Um, four of the faces and quarter turns on two opposite faces only. Um, so like you could do it for U and D moves freely, for example, but you can only do F2s, R2s, B2s, and L2s. Uh, and that's why you see these sort of states like Chris's where on the top, you only saw white and yellow uh, because if you can only do turns like that, that's the only, those are only two colors that could show up on those two faces. I'm just gonna. Um, I'm just gonna button here. If any of you have one of these, a two by three by three, it's 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 this move set but on a three by three. So, so it's ex like yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so that's why it's called domino reduction because it's essentially the domino cube on a three by three, at least the set of domino moves. Uh, awesome. Well, if, um, if you've ever noticed, I think James tried to say something, but uh, his internet cut out again. Uh, <laughs> But cool. So that um, Chris Chi, that uh, solution he just showed us was uh, the best solve, I believe, in the entire FMC competition uh, at A21. So that's pretty cool. Um, James, are you there? Is your internet working? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay, cool. Did you want to talk about uh, your solution to number three very briefly? Because I think we're running low on time. Yeah, that's one point seven. All right. So. There's eight bad edges on a green front here. E um, puts four on the four on the F face like this. F prime orients those. And then the other four are right here. So you can also solve these with two more moves. U prime, B prime. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I, I found did. that EO. <laughs> then I did it on red front here. So my first move was U. I believe led me to DR minus 4E4C. Um, Good stuff. And F2 makes my first bar right there. L2, E2 makes a pair right there. And last piece is right there. So R prime F2, the two bars. L prime U to make DR. It also makes this square. I actually ended up breaking up this square later, but um, I don't know. I, it made it. Kind of made. When I switch to um inverse here, um, start off. I'm making a two by two by two with this edge and this pair. R B two makes the square, and then D two puts it in over there. Um, then here, so here I notice that I have this pair right here, this big line mm -hmm. right here. If I want to solve this, I can go like that. I can go like I actually I can go like R U two, which takes out this pair and leaves this line up here, and that sets up nicely. That like once I solve the orange face, the red face is just gonna like be solved. Um, so R B two to solve that first pair in there, and here instead of just um instead of solving the cube and completely by uh that stuff right. I just did RU2 to lead me to 2E2E. Ah, uh, yes. 20 moves. And then I had this case again. Mm -hmm. um, so the previous moves leading into this were uh, R prime U2. So U2, R2 will cancel three. And U2, <laughs> R2, U2, R2. And it yep. ended with an R. I canceled another one for a 22. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, if there's anything that I've continued to learn here today is that DR is OP for FMC. Uh, <laughs> and will probably continue to be the optimal strategy for FMC. Um, if anyone's interested in doing more FMC, there's plenty of great resources out there for you to learn on domino reduction and just FMC in general. Uh, the community itself is pretty welcoming and opening to new people. And uh, there's a lot of like Facebook groups and stuff where people talk about solutions. So. Hopefully, if this uh, sparked your interest, you know, there's going to be, you know, lots of resources out there for you to get into the event. Uh, anything else you wanted to say before we uh, finished up kind of generally about the FMC round from yesterday? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. All righty. Yeah, cool. Really. All right. Well, three by three round one, I believe, is starting soon. So I'm going to uh, throw it back to uh, uh, everybody else after we take a quick break and we'll get ready for round one soon.
And we are live. Luke, your name is very loud. <laughs> yes. Um, hello, I am Daniel Goodman. Hello. Uh, and I am Andreas Vital, and we are your casters for today. We are your casters for the day. Um, Luke's cube is extremely loud right now. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, we are starting off the day with some three by three rounds one madness. Mm -hmm. And by madness, I mean Battle of the Lukes. We have yes. Luke Kreiser and Luke Garrett. You know them, you love them. They are keeping at home classics here. Um, so, yes. yeah, whenever you guys are ready, I'm guessing you have the scrambles pulled up and everything, and you can begin. All right. I mean, both Luke's here are extremely fast guys. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that uh, Luke Gracer, unfortunately, is uh, the second Luke G. Um, so let's see if today <laughs> he can come out on top. Yeah, yeah, we'll take a look. All right. Ooh. Didn't look like too too great a self from Luke right there. there. Yeah. Garrett turning pretty fast on last layer. Ending up with a 581. Ooh. Nice. That's a wow. great start for Luke Garrett. For sure. Gonna have to wait on the time for Luke Greiser. Ah, oh, there we go. 730. 730. Yeah, so nothing too right. extraordinary, but definitely solid. Starting out with a five, always good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I remember when fives were super rare. I remember when there were oh, for there sure. one official five. <laughs> yeah. Um, and now we just see him like once every average, pretty much, or maybe even more than that. Yeah, they, they come by all the time. Ooh. Yeah. And there's a 730, 730. for Luke Garrett, matching Luke Greiser's first solve. So let's see if Greiser can come back with a 581. Oh. <laughs> he had a bad lockup uh, there. Yeah, ooh, some lockups on last layer. That looks like maybe a ZB, though. Um, uh, yeah, I think it was. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that was a 730 for Garrett, and couldn't quite tell from Greiser, but we'll get that updated in a second. Mm -hmm. Oh, 791. Okay. And Luke Garrett on self three. Really He's fast turning. Flying through this one. Yeah. Although pauses on last layer. Yeah. Um for 722, that looks like. Yeah, it was the 722 it looked like. Mm -hmm. Um Luke Greiser turning pretty fast on F2L. Ooh. Some pauses in last layer, but nothing bad. That was a solid solve. A little bit of hesitation. A six, six sixty. Something. Was it six sixty? Six sixty something, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Pretty good solve. Yeah, that's definitely a solid one. So that makes Greiser's first six of the day. And mm -hmm. so, so far we're seeing mostly sevens from these two competitors, which is rare. They're definitely the more six type of competitors. Yeah, right. for sure. Yeah. Um, also, one thing you can notice is uh, Luke, uh, I was going to say Luke G, but uh, Luke <laughs> Garrett is um, color neutral. And, uh, yeah, Luke Greiser is orange so. cross on that one. Um, there are contrasting oh. styles. Whoops. Uh, Luke Greiser just... Uh, his connection Vanished. dropped, so we're going to have to... Okay, yeah, we'll be back in just a second. What is... What's that? Back. Sorry about the issues there, um, but we do have both of our Lukes back and yes. ready to rumble. <laughs> All right, cool. So whenever you guys are ready, you can uh, begin. Oh, very fast inspection. Mm. Rays are just turning wow. like a speed demon. Oh, but getting a plus two there. So that's going to make that a 925. Not what you like to see. 
Um, so, so far he's got two counting sevens, as does uh, Luke Garrett. So this, yeah. is, this is a pretty close match. Um, of course, it is just round one. Like These averages are definitely enough to make round two for both of them. Uh, but definitely both solvers are not at the top of their game uh, in yeah. this average. Yeah. 642. 642. Okay, so that's going to be counting for Luke Garrett. Not his best okay. possible average, but definitely pretty good. It's going to be a low awesome. solve here. Oh. Such fast turning on that PLL there. 698. Solid way to end it. Nice. So both competitors had one counting six and two counting sevens. Uh, both are yeah. going to end up... Or actually, wow, Luke Garrett, I was wrong, 698. That's sub seven. Um, wow. Yeah. Okay. And Luke Reiser's probably going to be a, lower, a low seven. Um, yeah, 740. So solid averages from both competitors here. Yeah, very good. Yeah, good stuff. All right, um, so that's going to wrap up our 3x3 three three round one stuff. Um, and with that, we are going to be moving on to a trivia match uh, coming up shortly. Yes. So thank you for tuning in, guys, and we'll be back with that in a few minutes.
<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cubing Trivia. I'm joined with my fellow streaming team members. Uh, on the analyst team, we have Phil and Keaton. And on the casting team, we have Andreas and Daniel. And right. these two teams will be playing against the chat. And yeah, it's going to be a fun time. Right. Got some great questions prepared. And we're going to see, you know, how well you all can do. You've seen how I can do with this. Now it's your turn. So yeah, yeah. when Let's... we're ready, um, we can, I guess, get started with the first question. All right. <clears throat> all right. So Felix Zemdegs has held world records in the most number of events. How many events has he held world records for? One, nine, two, eight, <laughs> three, <laughs> ten, or four, twelve? Uh, this is why you should use A, B, C, D, by the way, for no numerical questions. Um, so I can count seven already. Uh... Uh, how do we how do we choose? Um, okay, but I wonder this as well. <laughs> I, I'm I'm counting with my fingers. What if it's twelve and I don't have enough fingers? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so you gotta grow two more. Yeah, that, that'll that'll help me get faster at okay. cubing. I think um, I have the answer, unless I'm forgetting something. I think I have an answer. I, have I think I have an answer as well. All right. Um, so I guess the the best way to do I don't know how we're exactly supposed to do this, but I guess you could just tell me and then I'll tell you what the All right. correct answer is afterwards. We're, you're going to say your team's answer and I'm going to say mine. And okay. it's going to be the same time. Ready? <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, oh wait, right. how many? Okay, sure. Three, Are you cool with me doing three. it on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. 
All right, three, two, one, eight. Yeah. That's... Did you both say eight? We both both say yeah, eight. I thought it was nine, but I don't know. Okay. And, chat, and chat is currently polling a majority nine. And uh, so... What event did I miss? We will reveal yeah, the correct Maybe answer. Four blind. And it is eight. Let's yeah. go. Oh, okay. Okay. In, in yes. all two of my events, two through seven, oh, eight, and four blind. Yes. Just, okay, that, okay, that's what I thought. All right, Phil. I actually might have voted for seven if it was there because I wasn't sure about two by two. I forgot he had Yeah, that. I wasn't sure about two by two, but I knew he had four blind. I knew that too, I mean, yeah. The, yeah. The two by two world record average he had was 2.12. Okay. Okay, Mr. Know It All. He took oh, it. No, from, you're on my team. Never mind. You're cool. He took it from Chris. <laughs> and then Chris got. I don't. I don't remember exactly. Felix oh, got it right. Indeed, yeah, he did indeed have a two twelve world record two by two average. You're correct. Mm. Mm -hmm. Cool. I feel like a genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Results. <laughs> Records for 200, yeah. In which of these events has Matias Kuti never held a record? And in Ooh. this case, record can mean national, continental, or world. Oh. <laughs> one, one, <laughs> um, two, FMC, three, <laughs> Megaminx, or four, Pyraminx. Um, How lucky oh, now was on it? your phones. Oh, you made a face. Hmm. Do you know it? Me? Yes. No, I have something I'm leaning towards, but I yeah. really am not sure. Um, do you want to message each other? Yeah, we can um, do that. Yeah. Um, oh, wait. Yeah. Yes, I will mess. Okay, yeah. I'll message you on Discord. Um, okay. I, we, Phil and I have our answer. Okay. Um, we'll wait for what other teams to have answers. Yeah, that. That's what okay. I was going to say. Okay, yeah. So we seem to agree then. Um, All right. There, I, don't, sure, I don't see a poll in chat, and it seems pretty split right now. So I, I think I'll wait for that to appear. Okay. Um, okay, I see it now. And yeah. Um, wow, it's very, very close. Do we wait a little bit longer on this, or do we just sort of you know wait for it to close? Um, I don't know. Okay, it seems like one is... Kind of like staying barely above the other, but please give your answers. Hmm. All right. Also, I guess the other teams are re locked in now, now that we can see yeah. that. Yeah, and I, I'm locking in chat's answer. So even if one surpasses the other, the one that's right now winning is going to okay. be. Better. And okay. oh, that's happening. Oh, geez. Um, I think we're ready. It's going pretty. It's going pretty strong. I think we'll just call it this. And now, now yeah. is the lock time. Right now, no take backs here. Sure. All right. You ready, okay. DG? Three, yep. two, one, FMC. Yeah, uh, <laughs> all right. So and the correct answer, which chat got, is Megaminx. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. Okay, we lose. <laughs> okay. Matyash has held national records in FMC and Pyraminx, and he's held a world record in clock. So. Yeah. Okay. I did I not know he had a Pyraminx record. record. I knew that. I knew so I WM not clock. Clock, but I had no idea about the rest. Huh. Yeah, I, I really last, Oh, man. Matiash's clock world record average was the last mean of three uh, to beat top 100 for clock. And it was that way until like 2017. Hmm. Yeah. This is accurate. Hmm. But wow. I didn't know the rest. All right. Yeah. GG chat. Wow. Good one. <laughs> yeah. That's a gift card giveaway. <laughs> wait, wait. I'm losing money for this? <laughs> <laughs> you got yeah, to do it right to get them right. You know you have an incentive. Wait, 100 and 200 aren't gift card values, are they? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> All right. Okay, good. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, With over 16 million views, the most famous Ooh. video on this YouTuber's channel is called How to Solve a One by One Cube. One, oh. JPerm, two, Red KB, three, Nathan Wilson, or four, me, myself, and Pi, although I'm not quite sure if that last one's actually a YouTuber. <laughs> All 
but yeah, once everybody um, has their answer, um, mm. okay, um, you're ready to do this. Yeah. Uh, all right. We're Phil's going to say our answer. I'm going to say our answer? Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Right. You're, you're fine. I'll go with yours. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I agree. You'll say the answer? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay, he, he, he back. Um, My camera was oh, got, got weird. Sorry about that. He's back. All good. I'm back. All right. So I, I'm ready with our answer. Go for right. it, Phil. All right. You're it. Oh, do I just say mine or? Three, yeah. two, one. Yeah, okay. Three, two, one. Nathan Wilson. Me myself and Pi. Ooh, this is very Andres. interesting. This, is, this one's on me. Chat mm. <laughs> has overwhelmingly, with 78% of the vote, voted for Nathan Wilson, and they are correct. Thank oh, you. As <laughs> Phil and Eaton. Oh, I was so sorry for Pi's. I was Dang. so sorry for Pi's. Yeah. No one watches me, myself, and Pi. That's funny. For both of us, Keaton, for both for both of our teams, <laughs> we were split, it seems like. I believe me, myself, and Pi's most popular video is a vlog from day one of the 2013 World Championships. Yeah. He, has, mm -hmm. he has a one-by-one -one tutorial. It's you, you, I. That's the solution. Yeah. Yeah. I just but didn't Nathan know did that too. 15 yeah. million views. Yeah. I remember Nathan did that one. Dang it. Oh, man. Yeah. Thank you, Phil. Uh, we got our points. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna come back on Travis. All right. Yes, we will. There's still a bunch of questions. Left. By the way, for those who are wondering, um, some other members of the staff wrote the 100s. I wrote the 200s. So <laughs> that's how this works. Um, all right, let's get right into it. Three of these competitors have had a parent that has held a record. Which is the odd one out? One, Anthony Brooks. Two, Daniel Wallen. Three, Rama Temink. Or four, Richard J.S. Apagar. Okay, so this I don't know Anthony Brooks' Brooks mother had an NR. Uh, I'm very interested to see what chat is going to do with this one. No idea. And it's extremely split. Hmm. I'm actually really interested hmm. to see. Uh, how you all do on this. Okay, we have our answer. Yeah, okay, do you want to do yours? I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. Okay. Are you guys ready? Mm hmm Okay. Three, two, one. Daniel yeah, Rollins. Rollin. So, okay. and chat is tied for Anthony Brooks and Rama Temek. Okay. And um, you're all wrong. It's Richard J.S. Afagar. Oh. oh. Okay. Really? Yeah. Anthony Brooks' yeah. mother, Karen Brooks, has had Jamaican NRs. Daniel Wallen's mother, Agnes Wallen, has had Tanzanian NRs. And Rama <sighs> Temek's mother, Maria Oye, has had Indonesian NRs. What? Right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Oh. Wow. We were thinking that Daniel Wallen's parents might have been from a different country. Oh. Uh, I, 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 thought, yeah. I thought they were I all mean, from Sweden. I just figured he would have all the NRs so his parents couldn't get them. But nope, they have uh, a different nationality. That's how that's yeah, all of that the cases of this. Yeah. 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 Um, I know Richard J. S. Apagar is is an older cure, and I just presume that it'd be like his parents might have gotten a blind record or something for, mm, for something yeah. back. Yeah. Here's yeah. my second choice, but I was kind of thrown with, with this one. I see. That was a good one. This was a tough yeah. one. Yeah. Good oh, question, Stanley. Yeah. I'm glad you all enjoyed it. Yeah. All right. So Statistics 100 um, is actually, it turns out it's the same as Records 100. So we're not doing that one right now. 
We're just going to go on to statistics 200. Have fun. Okay, we need to come back. How many Polish competitors appear at the top of the Skube average rankings before you can come across a non-Polish competitor? Three, oh. four, six, or seven? Um, okay, we're good. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Uh, should I do it or do you want to do it? You can do it. I can and do you it? should okay. say answer number, not the competitor number. Wait, so okay. answer, we're saying if you the say answer three, number? It's, it, I don't, we don't know if it's answer three. <laughs> yeah, but if oh, I okay. say three and so, they say I'm wrong, okay. I'll go to the other one just in okay. case. Okay, say the <laughs> answer number. So that will be, so that'll be right. one, two, three, or four. Say okay. yeah. one of those four gotcha. numbers. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Three, mm -hmm. two, one, one. Oh. Correct. Yeah. And okay. chat also got oh, one. Nice. That's okay. Very oh, nice. Nice. Good. <laughs> yeah. Thought so. We got one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. If it were six or seven, that would be insane. Ooh. Someone yeah. in yeah. chat is someone in chat's blatantly saying, I checked the website. It is one. <laughs> well then. <laughs> I, I I'm loving I, I mean I'm there's no the honest thing that chat can't do and, that, right? That's that's mm. honestly that's kind of true, but <laughs> that that's yeah, really uh they it's also do have the crutch of it. having, you know, multiple hundreds of people who have a say in the answer. So mm -hmm. I knew it was Wukash, Mihao, and then Mihao, but I did yeah. not know who was in fourth place. And I'm like, mm. there's a high probability that it's a poll. Yeah, understandable. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I remember checking the rankings because I interviewed uh, the um, in one of the interviews we asked about Skube in Poland. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Good work, Phil. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, Rasmus Stubb Detlefson is fourth place in skew average. Uh, Thank you, Rasmus. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Next question. Which of these WCA competitions has had less than 700 competitors? Cuban USA Nationals 2017, Asian Champs 2016, Worlds 2017 or US Nationals 2019. Okay. Makes me wonder um, how did they find the number of competitors? Was it from three by three or did they actually it shows absolute competitor count on the website now? Okay. Oh it does. Okay. All right. Huh. Okay. Yeah, then we agree. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think I might <laughs> remember some specifics. But okay, yeah. Two okay. of our teams oh, no, we'll have see. the answer. And yeah, chat is very, very strongly voting for a single option. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. I am the one who picked ours, so I'll do ours. All right. Okay. Three, mm -hmm. two, one. Cuban National 2017. 17. Great yeah. job. I think we have 632. Let me check this. I don't actually okay. know this one. Okay. Ooh. Um, Cuban okay. USA Nationals 2017 had 656 competitors. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, that was that was that was that was Indiana. That was Indiana. That was Indiana. Indiana. That was Indiana. Okay. I'm going to... I'm going to... It was, go there were 633 in 3x3. Three three. 
Okay. That's that might have been where it might have come from. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Some th- somehow that number was in my head. Never mind. Anyway, every single team got the answer correct. It was yeah. Nats 2017. Great comp, but there were not 700 competitors. <laughs> but yes, chat is still in the lead. Uh, what are the point totals? Uh, chat right now has 600, analysts 500, casters 400. No. All right, Andre, let's, let's do this. All right, you have, you have a lot to make up here. Uh, mm. Chat needs to get this one wrong to lose this. Anyway, Josh Farron is well known for having attended 61 competitions in 2019, averaging more than one per week. How many of these they could delegate? 35, oh 37, God. 39, or 42? Oh my goodness. I don't see how anyone would know this. But <laughs> I don't think Josh knows this. Th- this one was designed to be unfair. It was the last question. You gotta do this sort of thing. Um, I really... Um, hmm. If Phil can give me unfair questions, I'll give him unfair questions as well, but at the expense of everyone else. Yeah. I'm just thinking of right now how I can bribe the chat to get it wrong. So, ooh. <laughs> well, I'll um, tell you. I'll tell you right now. I, I, I won't tell you what answer they're going for, but they're very split between three of them. So Wait, three of them. Only four yeah. answers. <laughs> they are like it is very <laughs> close between three of them. Um. So it's okay. it's, it's pulling away a little bit now, but. Just know that they were very indecisive for a yeah. while. Okay, we have our answer. Yeah, we just totally guessed. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, I'll go with yours. All right. Let's go. Let's hear it. Okay. Three, two, two one. Thirty-nine. 39. <laughs> okay. Ooh, chat also guessed thirty-nine, and you are correct. Ah. Let's go. Ah. Hmm. So I still lost, guessed, but we got it. I guessed on the upper end because I knew he was a listed delegate for Warm Up Sydney. Mm-hmm. So I just might have went under the assumption that he might have competed, like might have delegated more things than yeah. like he was the main delegate for. Right. Mm. Yeah. With but forty-two sounded too nice of a number. Mm. Yeah, that's a wrong. Also, it's the upper limit on the answers, so yeah. that can be kind of that's rare. A weird sign, yeah. yeah. You should have picked the prime number, right? Mm. Oh uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah. I hope you all enjoyed these trivia questions. It was lots of fun to come up with. Lots of fun to host. Um, and yeah, we. Um, We'll see you back for the next event very shortly, which will be a uh, six by six. Woo! Yes.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cubing at Home 1.2. I'm your host, Keaton Ellis. That was a very fun segment that we just did there. I'm glad that the uh, me, as part of the analyst team, uh, was able to win that. Uh, we've got some bragging rights uh, and a really fun little trivia competition. Congrats to chat, by the way, for winning, though. You guys did beat all of us, and we'll be giving away plenty of gift cards to all of you guys. So congratulations. Very good performance by you guys. Overall, very, very smart. We're going to be moving on to 6x6 six six right now. We have Ariane Kejrawal and Kiran Biahan. Both of these two are some of the fastest 6x6 six six solvers in the world, as always. Kiran's best known for Yao. Ariane, on the other hand, has been doing a lot of cubing coaching recently, especially for big cubes. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, if you're thinking about it, or if you just want to learn more about what cubing coaching is, uh, we're going to ask him some questions about that after the after his solves on stream. So do stick around for that. Anyways, without further ado, make sure you guys go and get your 6x6 solves in right now. Now's the time. Go to the website, click compete, and get started on those. And we'll be back in just a second with Aryan and Kiran. We're here with 6x6. Six six. I'm Daniel Goodman. Mm -hmm. I'm Andreas Pitalis. And we're your commentators um, for this. And we are joined with two amazing competitors. We've got Kiran and Arian, who are both mm -hmm. super talented, big cube solvers, and of course, very good at 6x6, six six, which is our yes. event today. Uh, so welcome, guys. Thank you for joining us. And feel Thanks free to get started you. whenever you're ready. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right. So I'm going to take my headphones off and I won't put them back on until I'm done all three solves. Sounds good. Good luck. Okay. Good luck. So these two guys have been doing big cubes for a while. They've both mm -hmm. been able to get some really good official rankings and some pretty big podiums too. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they do against each other. Yeah, for But sure. they're definitely both big podium contenders for cubing at home today. So it'll be exciting. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Looks like Kieran's starting. Yep. <coughs> so Kieran uses Yao. Um, yeah. Which makes him... More interesting than most big cube solvers, I suppose, in that regard. For um, sure. The solves are definitely not something you see every day. Mm -hmm. Arian is a Redux boy, but he also, he, like, I've talked to him about just big cube theory and stuff before, and he is on such another level uh, with just the sort of stuff he thinks about when he solves and, like, how much he analyzes, like, different center and edge solutions and stuff, mainly center solutions. Mm. Um, but yeah, he does a lot of really good analysis on that stuff. Wow, it's very impressive. Yeah. It actually looks like uh, Karen is doing pretty well on this solve. Yeah, I'm timing right now. He's about 55 seconds in. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. He's smashing. Yeah. Will we ever see a sub one? That is the question. <laughs> um, both of these competitors are... Not too far off officially. I mean, Arian's got a 126 single. Kiran's got a 119. Of course, that's a huge like amount of time 
for oh, uh, okay. six by six. But oh yeah, there we go. And he's got Whoa. looks like an H perm. That looks like about a one twenty one. I uh, can't quite see what that is, but wow. he'll type it in for us. Um, definitely a solid solve. He's got his official mean is a 123. Arion's is a 134. And they're both top mm -hmm. 10 in the world. So very yeah. highly ranked competitors here. Arion's on 3x3 three three stage. And he's about a minute 23 into the solve. Mm. So it looks like Kieran's going to take this first one. Oh, and he got parity. Mm. Okay. Yeah, this seems to match their official results so far. <laughs> Okay, yeah, it looks like about a 134 for Arion. Yeah, 134. Wow. Good stuff. Yeah. It was a 134. Yep, cool. Awesome. Um, <laughs> very impressive solves for both competitors. For sure. All right. Solve number two here. Yep. Yeah, Arion definitely. Uh, so, uh, seem... Oh yeah. Not sure if I miscounted or not. Um, um, that's fine for six by six. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll do I'll do self too. Mm -hmm. As long as it looks scrambled enough, that's the <laughs> rule for six oh. by six, pretty much. It's a nice orange one. Um, yeah. Kieran's misscramble may actually uh, hurt him a little bit. Although he does do green, so it won't affect him anyway. Guys, I think I might have misscramble. Should I uh, re like redo oh, okay. the scramble? Or You're fine. Does this work? You're fine. Okay. You're fine. Yeah. Oh, it turns out they both misscramble. <laughs> That's funny. Well, <laughs> it's even. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah, six by six and seven by seven and Mega Minx are three events where misscrambles are permitted according to WCA regulations. Mm -hmm. Um. Generally, it's at the discretion of the delegate, so obviously you can't have like a one-move solution um, or like a T-perm or something, but um, as long as it's thoroughly scrambled enough, which both of these competitors or cubes are fine, like we trust them, um, and that'll be fine. Kieran has some interesting turning. Mm. Could be the Yao turning. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Kieran is pretty much the main person who proves that Yao is solid on big cubes. Because a lot of people doubted that for a long time. Yeah. He's about 58 seconds into his self right now. And it looks like he's doing pretty well on this one as well. Yeah. We're pretty much looking for like low 120s, maybe some sub 120s from Kieran here. Mm -hmm. um, Arion is definitely more in the 130 range, maybe sub 130. Um, so somewhere around there would be good for him. Oh. Looks like he's on three by three stage. Yeah, he's about a minute twenty in, so this might be a little bit slower than his last self. But there oh. we go. Looks like about a one twenty three, one twenty five. Okay. Wow. Solid solve though. That's a great start. So yeah, with six by six, of course, it is a mean of three, which means every solve counts. Mm -hmm. um, there, are, you know, a counting solve that doesn't mean anything. Every solve is going to be counting <laughs> in six yeah. by six. So you just you can't DNF above all things. You can't. Um, yeah, you can't get a pop. Pop will kill everything yeah. you were striving for. So it's funny, like, you know, with a short event like Pyraminx, um, you know, you can do four solves and have a pretty solid average and know that you're going to be good no matter what. But like six by six, no, you can have two great solves and you still have to bring the heat on that third solve if you want it to end up all right. Yeah, it definitely brings another kind of stress to the event. Yeah. Arion's wrapping up here. He's about a minute 40 in, so this is not a great sell for him. Ooh. Okay, yeah, it looks like maybe a 145. 144. Messed up. Okay. Yeah, he said he messed up. Not too happy about that. Um, All right. But let's see. Let's see how these third solves are. Kieran's definitely set up for a pretty great average. Uh, like I said earlier, his PR mean is a 123, so right now he's pretty much on track for that. Exactly. Um, Ooh. so let's see. Wow. It's so impressive to see Yao being done on the six by six. It really is. Yeah. Hmm. 
Mm. All right, now Rion's gonna start soon. Yeah. Yeah, Arion needs something good here. Um, keeping it home is very competitive, so if he wants to podium, he's probably going to need to get one of his better selves here. It's looking. It's also looking like Kieran is on good pace as well. Yeah, yeah, Kieran's doing really well so far. The turning is just insane. It's just like nonstop for six yeah. by six, and that's what it has to be. It's nonstop, and Kieran with using Yao has the wide mm. moves. Yeah. Crazy. All right, he's got parity um, and PLL parity too. Oh, man. But he's finishing that off. Six. And a 126. Wow. Not bad, not bad. His worst solve, but that's a pretty great worst solve. Um, yeah, especially with double parity. Yeah. Uh, Our podium so far. Stage. Yeah, Kieran is going to be a number one so far, uh, which is pretty great. Congrats, Kieran. Um, and it looks like we've got Kevin Hayes with a 131 average right now um, in second place. And we'll see if Arion is able to at least snag a podium here. He would pretty much need sub-138 for his average um, to get a podium. Ooh. Turning so fast. So how has Arion been doing? Uh, Arian started out with a 134 and a 144, so he needs something a little bit better on the self to get that podium, but he's about a minute five into the self. He's on edges. Um, definitely possible. Right now, podium is looking like a 138, unless somebody comes in last minute with some crazy results. I think the 138 is going to be possible on the self, definitely. Yeah, for sure. He, he's at a 125 right now, starting up three by three stage. So yeah, I mean, it's gonna depend on parity. It seems like. Nice. And he's got parity. There we go. Okay. So that'll do it. Um, I yeah. think that'll most likely be a podium. Let's see mm -hmm. what that average is. Okay, that's a 137 average. Yeah, that'll do it. So it looks like wow. your podium is going to be Kieran, Kevin, and Arian in that order. <laughs> good stuff. Looks like we got two two podiums here. Congrats that's to both awesome. of you. Yeah, Congrats. good stuff. Hi, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks. thanks to both of you for joining us. Um, I believe now we're going to pass it over to our analysts uh, to mm -hmm. have a little interview with both of you guys. But thanks a lot. It's been fun. Thanks. See ya. Thank See you ya. for having us. See you guys soon. Yeah. Hey everyone, uh, I am, I guess I can't say back because it's the first time I'm appearing on the stream with Stanley aside from our trivia game. So we're here with uh, Aryan and Kieran, who's putting on a very comfortable jacket. Nice jacket. All right, so Thank you uh, 
if you guys uh, remember from last time, we asked we asked Kieran, um, what's one thing interesting about you that you, you you don't think people know yet? And I think he finally has an answer. So, uh, yeah. what is it? Uh, I have a lazy right eye, so I don't use the vision from my right eye. Like, I can't reach from it. And hmm. basically, like, I cube with just my left eye interesting well, you're beating interesting. you're beating most of the world so cool <laughs> and uh and our, our last, last, time, last time you tripped me up yeah yeah sorry about that and uh yeah if uh Aryan had this question what would what would you say what would i say well i'll probably give you a better answer by the end of the interview but for now just uh, to entertain our viewers <laughs> oh that's interesting okay all right so Something kind of funny. You guys, <laughs> you guys are really good at six by six, and I know Aryan coaches, um, and I'm sure Kieran's been around and seen a lot of people do six by six. What's one thing that uh, perhaps beginners and intermediates do that you think uh, can be improved? Like something that you see, you know, uh, on an everyday basis. So for for me, um, for most of the coaching clients I have, I think they and from people I've, I've seen solving, I think the issue with um, beginner intermediate solvers would be that they don't put in the time to have efficient solutions um, for six and seven. Um, mm -hmm. Because you know you can't achieve that just by doing solves. Even if you're slow, you're gonna try to see, okay, what do I see next? The cube is so big that you're gonna be focusing on look ahead during your solve. And my biggest tip for any beginner inter intermediate solver is to sit down and do untimed solves and just think critically about what each of the pieces do. Um, and I think like, you know, after doing that, even maybe for five solves, you will see a time drop when you go back to doing time solves. Cool. Um, yeah, I think I would echo what Arion said. Um, I think a lot of beginners, uh, obviously, it's very easy to improve very fast on big cubes at the start. So beginners would see their times drop on six by six from six minutes to five minutes to four minutes, to three minutes, and then assume what they're doing is right. Um, but uh, in the process of dropping from like six minutes to three minutes, they're actually implementing bad habits. And mm -hmm. then it's hard to shut habits off when you get down to like the two minute range. So just uh, do slow solves, just try and find efficient solutions like Arian said, and just kick that kick the bad habits out before you start to really improve. Oh. I'm sorry. Right. No, I'm we back. Some? No, I'm here now. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. My my <laughs> Discord is uh, acting up. But uh interesting question, uh, which is uh so I'm sure you've seen each other solve. What's one thing you like about the other person's solving style? So, so for Kieran, um, I love his flow. Uh, I think um, I think this, we were talking about this before we came on here. Um, I think with with Yao solving in general as a technique, um, it caters more to people who have good look ahead, who flow better. Well, as Redex caters more to people who are efficient uh, and can solve in fewer moves. And I think someone like Kieran, like if you see his solves, even during transitions, he doesn't pause one bit. And I think that's kind of why he exerts such dominance over everyone else. I don't, I mean, aside from Max Park, I don't think anyone does it as well as Kieran does. Cool. Yeah, so for Arian, uh, I haven't seen as, as many of his solves, but I do know he's extremely efficient. So whereas like I, I would be, you know, I would have good flow, but my solves are just incredibly inefficient. Where Arian is the exact opposite, like everything he does, it's just like I can't find a better way to solve it than the way he solved it. So he's incredibly efficient. Cool. All right, looks like we're uh, kind of stretched for time because uh, we gotta get on with the uh, event. But uh, in the mood of casting compliments, Stanley, you're a wonderful caster and a good friend. And uh, so hopefully, <laughs> you hopefully too are we a great can. Caster. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> All right, so I think uh, yeah, we have to to wrap up. But uh, we'll be going to the Ready Cube next. Uh, Ready Cube is a really interesting puzzle, and uh, we will see Ed Dibley uh, do some cool stuff on that puzzle. So stay tuned for that.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cubing at Home 1.2. I'm your host, Keaton Ellis, and we just finished some really nice 6x6 solves. Thanks to Arian Kejrawal and Kieran Behan for coming on and doing the solves for us. Next up, we're going to be moving on to ReadyCube. ReadyCube is an unofficial event that is sort of uh, as close as you can get to a WCA official event without being officially a WCA event. There's a decent community for it. And it is something that is relatively new and is a little bit different from the rest of the puzzles that are seen normally on our Cubing at Home streams. So we have brought on Ed Dibley, aka Ed the Rex Man, to do some solves for us and show off what he can do with ReadyCube. So without further ado, we're going to be moving on to ReadyCube. Take it away, Ed. And we're back. We're joined mm -hmm. here with Ed Dibley. Hello. Hello. Um, and Hello. we're going to be doing some ReadyCube today. So this is pretty exciting. ReadyCube is one of the Cubing at Home exclusive events. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to be really cool to see how this goes um, and what sort of results we're able to see. Uh, so yeah. yeah, Ed, whenever you're ready, thank you for joining us. Uh, and feel free to get started. Good luck. Thank you for having me. Thanks of very course. much. OK. Yeah. Uh... I think we'll definitely be seeing a lot of interesting turning and finger tricks uh, here because this is like the only proper corner turning puzzle. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that we're competing with. So it's going to yeah. be awesome to see some of that. Yeah. I have uh, dabbled in ReadyCube a bit myself when it first mm -hmm. came out. Um, I had some of the unofficial records. Um, I, have, I can't compete with today's solvers. Uh, today's top guys average like seven or so. Um, <laughs> But I, I was able to get an 11.54 average on these scrambles. 
um, which I'm pretty happy with. So yeah, we'll see how uh, how Ed's able to do here. He does do a lot of really cool unofficial events, which is mm -hmm. always exciting to see. A lot of rotations actually with this kind of puzzle. Which yeah, is very definitely. Cool to see. When I solve, I definitely um, okay. That looked like a pretty solid solve. Yeah, uh, so ten ninety one. Nice, nice, nice. Good start. That's a good start. Um, yeah, I definitely like tend to have more rotations in the beginning, um, and then in the mm -hmm. middle of the solve, I have a bunch of Y rotations. Um, the general yeah. ready cube method that I use, and I think that a decent amount of solvers use at least, um, is solving a layer and then uh, doing the middle layer edges. Um, mm -hmm. And then your last layer is pretty simple. It's either a skip yeah. or like a sledge. From, um, from what I've seen so far, that's yeah, definitely what it's looking like. Yeah, it seems to be close to what Ed's doing. I know there are also some methods that people do where they solve the last layer during uh, the second layer, the middle layer. Wow. Um, that's not something that I do personally. Um, as far as I remember, when I was really into it, I was sort of debating what to do, and I settled on mine for whatever reason um, that I can't remember now. But it is it is a very intuitive puzzle. Um, pretty much no algs. You just kind of figure stuff out on the fly, uh, which is yeah. a really appealing quality, in my opinion. I mean, that's why I like Pyraminx. I mean, what's really cool about this puzzle is that it's actually it's a non-WCA puzzle, but it's fully magnetic. Yeah. And... Oh, he's got a soon yeah. for the corner. Oh, wow. he looks like he might have done it the wrong way. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts. Uh... Yeah. Those twisted corners are frustrating. It's a there's a fourteen for him. Cool. I yeah. saw the wrong um, way around. Yeah, that's I do the same thing a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I try to avoid twisted corners like that, just because like it's hard to recognize. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's frustrating. Jeez. Yeah, we've got a whole bunch of people um, competing right now. Of course, everybody at home who has ready cubes that signed up can compete now. Um, yeah. Results are very interesting. They're kind of all over the place because you know that's what happens with non-WCA stuff. Um, yeah, it was it was yeah. actually very interesting with the last non-WCA event uh, with Mirror Blocks. How much yeah. the times were spread out. Oh, definitely. Um, all right, we're on solve number three here. Very funny how he has a ready cube next to him, but he's using uh, uh, regular turning puzzles to warm up. Yeah. <laughs> That is funny. Yeah, it's funny. I still am using a Moyu ready cube, so I have to focus on like when I solve my main focus is just accurate turning. Um mm -hmm. which is a frustrating thing to have to focus on, but I feel like this uh magnetic cool. one. Oh, that looks like a solid solve. Okay, a fourteen. Not not anything too extraordinary, but definitely a solid solve. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I don't know. I think this this new um, magnetic Yushin one is definitely yeah, definitely the one to get. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I remember uh, when the Ready Cube first came out, there was actually a lot of people who wanted it to become a WCA event. Yeah, um, I would I still there's... support its addition for sure. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, it is. It is a very intuitive puzzle. It's kind of like a bigger pyraminx, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I can see why people wouldn't want it. But um, what what is your stance on that? Um, I mean, I think adding new events is always good, especially a puzzle like this that uh, has a different functionality than other puzzles. Yeah, um, it would be very interesting to add. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really cool seeing it happen in cubing at home because you definitely get to see like what the top mm -hmm. solvers look like and like just sort of the top strategies and everything. And it's often yeah, ignored and, in the cubing community. Um, but and, this is and just a good platform against so many people. Yeah, uh, in an event. Looks like a sledge on this last layer. There we go. Um, and that's going to be a thirteen. Okay, so so far counting thirteen and fourteen. I believe he's got one self left. All right. Let's see here. Very interesting, just as a whole.
All right, and this is going to be the last solve. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, very interesting how the table is uh, sometimes used, sometimes not used with this puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like Mega where like very often for for last layer it's table. It's like kind of it's pretty much the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, on and off. Yeah, thirteen point seven. There we go. All right, so that's going to be probably average. high thirteen, low fourteen average. That's pretty mm -hmm. solid. Yeah, good stuff. Nice. Um, well, thank you very much, Ed. That was a pretty solid average. What did it end up being? Thirteen. Uh, um, does it say? Oh, oh yeah, it's like thirteen point nine eight. Nice. Yeah. Okay, that's a, nice. yeah, that's a solid average. Congrats. That's pretty much pretty much what I was going for. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. It's been super fun. Thank you for having um, me. Yeah, and now we're gonna pass it over to uh, our analysts, Phil and Stanley, so you can talk about the yes. events a little bit with them. Sure. But, yeah. Thanks for joining us. See you. Thank you for having me. See you. Hey, uh, we are back with uh, Ed talking about ReadyCube. So the puzzle you just saw on stream was the ReadyCube. Uh, it's not a WCA official event, but it looks really interesting. So how does the cube work and uh, what does the method look like for solving it? Uh, it's just a corner twister. So it doesn't have any centers. We just have our eight corners and our 12 edges. And instead of turning at the faces, we turn at the corners instead. Um, and the solve is pretty much layer by layer. You you solve your white first, say, and then you solve these middle edges, and then you do the last at the end. There's some extra stuff. You might solve maybe one face and then an adjacent face and kind of do some fancy stuff there. Uh, I haven't practiced enough to really be fancy on this puzzle, but <laughs> the option's there. It's fairly okay. intuitive, I'd say. It's cool. a pretty intuitive puzzle. Interesting. So yeah. I'm looking at the results, and I see people getting seven averages and eight yeah. averages. Mm -hmm. um, what's happening there? Um, people are faster <laughs> this puzzle. It's actually, it's pretty easy. And if you put in uh -huh. enough practice, you can be pretty fast. Um, my understanding is the world best single is sub three, and the world best average Ooh. is sub five. So it's really, really fast. OK, really fast. it sounds only a little bit faster than three by three. Um, I mean, it's easier than three by three, just the hardware and the fact that you have to turn at the corners. It's very, yes, it's not very ergonomic. Yes. So like obviously right. three by three, super ergonomic and the hardware is amazing. 
Um, the Yushin eight petals cube is better. It has magnets. The springs are kind of rubbish, but apart from that, it's pretty good. <laughs> um, and like, yeah, I, I can I can totally see people getting really really first times on that, like around the seven mark. Um, mm. I wouldn't be surprised by that, but yeah, you you may want to watch a video for that. Who knows? Sure. And something that is heard a lot in the community is uh, the similarity between ready cube and pure minx technique wise. Uh, uh, what do you, how do you see these similarities to be, you know, represented in the puzzle, and uh, what different major differences do you see as well? That, uh, major difference is that pure minx is a one look puzzle. If you're really good at pure minx, you figure out the whole solution in inspection. I think it's possible to one look this. It's just a lot of work and not worth it. Um, you could probably look into maybe the first eight or nine edges and then just solve the rest of the cube because it's it's very intuitive. There's no algorithms realistically. There are four movers, so I guess that's an algorithm. Um, uh, but I, maybe it's similar. I'm not very good at pyramids. I, I figured out both of these puzzles on my own. So like, I guess there's an intuitive aspect there. You're not. It's not overly complicated it's not like three by three where you have to realistically you need some sort of algorithm and technique there uh, with these puzzles you can probably pick it up and get it in half an hour or so right yeah and then also you were talking you mentioned hardware a little bit earlier uh, what are your thoughts on that you know what could we see as improvements you, you talked about you know the springs but what else um, would you want to see in a speed uh, ready cube uh i'd say the yushin eight petals cube is very close to ideal hardware i'm just picky so i i like solid springs that i can feel very tactile um i like all of my cubes are much slower than people tend to like so the the magnets are a little strong in this one because the springs are weak so make the springs a little stronger weaken the magnets a bit the curved edges was a great idea so on the original ready cube it doesn't have that curved edge and i often catch a lot on with my own fingers and stuff when i'm turning it but i don't get that so much here and uh, you may notice the original ready cube is bigger than a three by three. Yeah. Um, whereas the Yushin is about the same size. That's an improvement as well. Having mm -hmm. the size is really, really important. I think um, if they made this one in stickered, I'd, I'd say it's perfect okay. <laughs> just because I like sticker puzzles. Yeah, it's much more my thing. Right. Yeah. I was going to say uh, the fact that the puzzle was so big means you have to contort your wrists so much to, to solve it. Right. And maybe the smaller yeah. size would be easier. Easier the small size is easier on the hands for sure. Cool. All right. Well, that's uh, about it for our interview. Um, it was a lot of fun to to learn about this puzzle. I hope more people can try it. Uh, this yeah, puzzle definitely. is actually one one interesting thing about it is it's not horribly expensive. So that hopefully that's another another thing that can draw more people to it. And uh, it was really fun to watch on stream. Yeah. Thank you for having me. All right. Take care. Take care. Ten minutes is a long time to be away from you. Hello and welcome back to Cubing at Home Season 1 Competition 2, aka Cubing at Home 1.2. I'm your host, Keaton Ellis. Thanks so much to Ed Dibley for coming on and talking to us about Ready Cube. That was, you know, very interesting. Something I, I don't usually see in cubing. So glad to have him on. And uh, I hope you guys all enjoyed a little bit of Ready Cube. We're going to be moving on to our next event, which is. Skube. Unfortunately, one of our Skube uh, invitees did not respond to us. So we have a singular Carter Kukala coming on to stream to do some solves for you guys. 
Make sure that you guys are going onto the website and competing. You can also use exclamation point compete down in chat to get straight to that page. But otherwise, take it away, Carter. And we're back. We're here for some absolutely insane skewb, absolutely yeah. insane solves <laughs> from Carter Kukala here. Um, so Carter is one of the world's greatest skewb solvers at mm -hmm. this point in time. Uh, we've had him on stream before, so hopefully you guys all know him and love him. Um, but he is here to do some skewb for you. Yes. And yeah, Carter, whenever you're ready, feel free to get started. All right. Super short event. Yeah, Scuba is a very short event. Yeah, especially with guys like Carter here. Yeah. Oh, he even has his own uh, judge. Yeah. I remember when Scuba was first added, um, I definitely did not think it would reach the speeds of Pyraminx. And like, here we are. It's pretty much, it's very yeah. close, the two events. Mm -hmm. Three oh seven sounds like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Carter is currently seventh in the world and first in North America for ski bathroom with a two thirty eight. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's super impressive. Um, definitely hoping for sub threes here. Mm -hmm. For sure. Oh no. It's gonna be quite a, oh, is that a plus two? If it's 504. Good. 504, okay. Probably his worst one anyway, so it shouldn't affect it in the long run, but um, yeah, not what yeah. you like to see. That's one of the tough things with short events like this. Sometimes, you know, like I feel it's the same with two pure and skew. You just like get yeah. fives or whatever. Like, yeah, little, little mistakes just yeah. uh, cost you a lot. Exactly. And it's crazy because for somebody like Carter, a five would be like two good skew solves, you know? <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. Eight seconds. Ooh. Not too happy with that. 305. 305. Okay. Yeah. Low threes are not what he's going for. They're still really good, of course, but like, yeah. might not be enough to podium. We'll have to wait and see. Looks like he's struggling maybe a little with his recognition today. Mm, yeah. Definitely some pauses. More pauses mm -hmm. than you'd hope for. Ooh. Oh, no. Yeah, this might make the five counting. At 47. Yeah. Counting five. Oh, you like to see. Yeah, counting five does not help. 
Um, his best possible average right now is a 372, which is definitely not a great average for Carter. Um, let's see. Hopefully, he can get his best self on this one. Oh, 68. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did get it. Yeah, he got he got the best one at least. Mm -hmm. uh, 268 for a 372 average. All right. Um, definitely going to be cutting it close um, for top eight here. Um, but it looks like it looks like there are a lot of a lot of sub twos so far. So probably not what you were hoping for, Carter. I guess. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that counting five hurt. Sorry about that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I'm sure we'll have you on for more Skube in the future, but it's been super fun. Um, and yeah, better luck next time with that. It's been good having you on, though. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. See ya. Thanks. See ya. What's up, everyone? So instead of doing a, an interview segment for this, we thought it'd be fun to break down a couple of solves from previous 3x3 three three rounds in Cubing at Home. So right now, uh, the first solve we've got on screen is a 6.39 solve by Chris Yen. So yeah, let's just get into this. So after inspection, we'll just go right here. So we're at this angle. Um, you can see he's got a white cross piece in here, just like this. This green is ready to go in as well. And then the blue and orange are close by, so he'll be able to use D moves and F moves to insert them as well. So we can see the cross play out just like this. Green goes in, then blue goes in, then orange goes in, and then he aligns. So now we have a white cross. Um, hopefully that was decently easy to follow. I can show it one more time. So to recap, if this will go back, um, 
right here, we have the green one, which will just go in. And then these two, you can misalign the D layer and then just put them in the front. So green goes in. Now this misaligns, this goes in, then this F2, and then it's done. So now we see this free pair that's built and he'll just insert that into the back. And what this will do by inserting it to the back, you're leaving the front open so you can see more things because that's the side that you're closest to. So once he does this, you know, you can see all these different F2L pieces in the front and he'll notice this one right here, this corner and the edges in the slot. So he can do a nice, you know, triple sexy insert to put this in. However, this will leave like left slots open at the end. So he will, you know, have, have a little bit of a harder time finding pieces. And yeah, as you can see, you know, it's a little bit harder to see things. You see this corner, right? But it's a little bit harder to see the other pieces of F2L. So what he actually does here is he U2, Y2, and now he's able to see this pair right here. So he'll do a nice insert like this to put it in. And then now you have this pair. So it's not anything super special in F2L, but he did have to do this Y2 for visibility. And yeah, while it might not have, while it might not look like the uh, strongest, you know, move in that situation, you know, it, it sometimes can be useful if, if nothing else, just to see things. Like it might not be ideal, but it may just have saved him in the solve. So now that we're done with F2L here, we can AUF this to, this is the angle where you do most, you know, algs for this OLL from. And we see Nick lost corners. So these two stickers right here are the same, these two oranges. And this red is, you know, opposite of those two. So with an alg that, uh, so with this alg that he's about to use, he'll know that he's able to have solved corners at the end at the very least. So we can go through this and we'll get an EPLL. And actually, as it turns out, uh, it skips entirely. And um, yeah, so to go back here, you know, we have this uh, corner permutation case. And using this alg, he'll be able to do this um, very quickly. I just finished with a 6.39. So I'll just show you the solve once again. I'll try not to pause it. So once again, you know, cross pieces here, here, and here. And we see, you know, puts it in moves the D layer to put these in, free pair back here. Now this corner will go in. And now we have a bunch of pieces that we can't really see quite as well as we'd want to. So he'll Y2, um, could be better to use lefty moves in this case though. And now he'll just do this pair. And it leaves him with an OLL or possibly OLL CP, depending on what his main algorithm is. And yeah. So this solve uh, was 48 moves in HTM, 52 executed, and that is 8.14 TPS. So fairly nice solve from him. Next solve we'll look at is this is a, a 6.36 from First in Fushada, I'm pretty sure. Let me just go check this pretty quickly. Yes. Um, and so we have, uh, once again, we're looking at a white cross. Uh, this one is, you know, a little bit less obvious what to do, but we have this piece in the bottom layer, this piece flipped in the bottom layer, and then these two on top. So what he's going to do is just move this to the solved position first. So we'll see this move. And next, he'll just insert this and then insert these two together. So we put that down. Now this goes to front. So instead of just doing an F2 here, which you know would just solve this piece, he'll do only an F. And that leaves this piece right here. So you can just insert it intermittently. And you get the entire cross from there. So now you have uh, a few different things for F2L. We have this pair right here. We have this pair right here. But what he's going to do is this one because it's the easiest to reach. He can he probably saw it during inspection, almost certainly. And you know, it just goes into the back very easily. So you just do you, break up the pair, now put it in. And what that actually does is it makes this pair free. Um, so uh, you know, while you could use back left, sometimes, you know, in this case, he'll actually 
rotate and do an F move insert. And it works out in his favor because he kicks out this pair right here, which he can just go straight into. And, you know, you could just insert it into the back left and not rotate. Uh, so, like, if you see right here, he, this can just go into the back left. But then you'd have to rotate after. So in this case, you know, it works out pretty decently for him. And so right here, he just gets this free pair. And in inserting that free pair, it actually breaks up this, this pair and puts it in a position where it can be solved just like this. This is a pretty standard pair solution. So he'll just put this right into the back. And now we're at last layer. And I'm sure many of you will recognize this OLL. We have this T shape, and the, there aren't bars on the front and back. So it's just the standard EO algorithm, F R U R prime E prime F prime, which will do very quickly. And then afterwards, unfortunately, yeah, it, unfortunate case, but you know, he makes the best of it, gets a V perm, and just, you know, uses this nice, you know, newly popular RUD algorithm. And once it finishes, you know, he gets a 636. So great solves from both of these competitors. I'm glad I could break this down. Uh, it's been great. Thank you all for having me on. Uh, and I hope you learned something from these two breakdowns. See you later. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Keeping at Home 1.2. I'm your host, Keaton Ellis. We just saw some incredibly insightful commentary from Stanley Chapel over some of the solves from round one that you have uh, just seen today. But next, we're going to be going on to 3x3 three three round two with two of the both, uh, best and most well-known online solvers, Timon Kolashinsky and Leo Borromeo. So... Without further ado, we are going to be moving on to Timon and Leo. do the intro hey everyone welcome to round two of three by three here we're with leo borromeo and timon kolashinsky um two extremely good uh, 
competitors from previous Cubing at Home comps, both um, former champions, um, and uh, we're going to be competing in round two. Let's see how they do. Yeah, I think these guys are the winningest competitors in 3x3 three three at least, right? Between yeah. them, they have the most wins out of uh, any comp uh, competitor uh, uh, in this series. I have three and Leo has two, right? Yeah, that's a, yeah. That's a lot of wins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, this is like definitely these guys are the standard for these online head-to-head -head competitions. Yeah. Uh, they, they handle the pressure really well. Mm -hmm. All right. So it uh, looks like Leo finished first in uh, three by three round one, uh, which mm -hmm. is really impressive. He scored a six thirty-five average, and Timon got a seven fifty-seven. So a little catching up to do. But uh, these guys have both made it to numerous finals. So mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see. See how it works. Looks like uh, Timon has switched his cube to a GAN. Yeah. So yeah, they're they're both they're both going for it, well, and uh, he doesn't he a, doesn't look too happy. I think that's a DNF. Yeah. That looks like a yeah. DNF. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Wait, I need, wait. I need to do. I need I need to get the scrambles first. Okay. Let's. <laughs> Let's, oh, let's, let's, uh... let's get the guy some scrambles. Okay, I have them. I have them. I have them. Oh, good. Perfect. Good, good, good. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully, uh, Timon has better luck in the, the next four solves. Yeah. Yeah. DNFing creates so much uncertainty in your average. Actually, one thing I've noticed uh, that's very cool about Timon and solves is uh, that he takes almost exactly the same amount of time between solves. This is from Monkey League. He takes around 34 seconds every time. Uh, 34? That's really yeah. precise. That's very precise because we, we were timing uh, the time between the solves, mm -hmm. and it, it just shows like he, he has a set routine uh, for what he does, and you, you'll see he does some breaths, and it's very interesting. Um, that's uh, That's really um, interesting. Yeah, 34 seconds is a really exact amount of time. Like, yeah, it's very impressive. Yeah, so, yeah. Hopefully, yeah hopefully it can uh, help him, you know, uh, get his mind away from the DNF and, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, onto, onto better things. Looks like Leo's getting ready to solve as well. All right, he just he just goes and he turns fast. Flying through this one. Oh, oh that's so impressive. 50. Jeez. Okay, <laughs> good job. Oh no! And uh, Timon's continuing to be a little frustrated. Yeah. Eight fifty-five. Oh. Eight fifty-five. So he has a counting eight now. Yep. But uh, yeah, hopefully he can pull it together. There's still three solves left. For sure. Yeah. So yeah, the, these two guys are the uh, definitely the people that the rest of the competitors are scared of in the uh, mm -hmm. in the head-to-head -head finals. For really sure. hard to beat these guys. No, yeah. so I don't think I'm gonna go in. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, do your best. Do your best, right? I think the only people I'm that trying to get three fives. That's the <laughs> only one. All right, let's go. All right. Seven three for Leo. Mm-hmm. Let's see if uh, Timon can get his three fives. Uh, he did recently get the uh, unofficial WR AO5. Uh, yes, he did. Yes. Uh, Which, and it looks uh, like he switched cubes. Could that be his old main? Yeah, I think that's his Valk. All right. Oh. Many points. Yeah, he, he does not look happy. 831. 831. Yep. And uh, Leo's still going at it with the 535. 535. That is... I don't know if he looks happy or disappointed. That's, somehow he does not look happy with that. I mean, it is very uh, early for him right now. Mm. Or late, depending late. on if he st yeah. stayed up. Yeah, the question with Leo is, did you stay up or... Did you sleep before? He, he's, uh, yeah, definitely has superhuman endurance. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. And, wow. uh, Leo's off doing his. So off six thirty. Yeah, it just frame rate's not too high on the camera, but it definitely looks like he's not pausing much. Yeah, he did not pause much, and he's just straight into it. Like cross F two all is like nothing for him. Yeah, it's impressive. It makes me so watching these guys makes me so aware of how many pauses I take. When, yeah. When I when I do a solve, and I'm you know like I don't think I'm a bad at cubing, but it, may, it just, makes you not feel uh, that good. Yeah, exactly. Because they're just so they're so they're so maybe make it look so easy. Uh, Timon's looks like a nine point four. Oh man. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, a disappointing average for, uh, for Timon. I think Leo's actually done with average now. Yeah, so. Leo's done too. Okay. Let's see if Timon can at least get a good single here to to pick it up a little. Mm -hmm. I mean, I may as well get a DNF now. Yeah, go go for the single. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, oh no. Oh, That's no. okay. That's good. Oh. Yeah. What is that? That is A six. Six point nine. All right. Yeah. I can't believe that's my best solo of the comp. Oh, yeah, yeah, not so a bad. not a good day yeah, for three by three. So horrible today. Like I'm also uh, six by six was also bad. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Hopefully, uh, you can bounce back from this. Uh, we know you yeah. definitely can. So don't don't worry too much. Uh, you're uh, yeah, one of the most successful cubing at home competitors yeah. uh, of all time. I mean, this competition hasn't existed for a long time, but <laughs> for as long as it's existed, you've yes. been one of the best. So, yeah, I okay. hope you can yeah, remember that and bounce back. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, all right. All right. Shall we go to the now. next segment, which... Uh, am I in the next segment? Hello and welcome to season. Hello and welcome to Cubing at Home 1.2. I'm your host Keaton Ellis. Sometimes you mess up the introduction a little bit. Uh, it was interesting to see uh, both Timon and Leo solves that we just saw for two by three round two. Uh, unfortunately for Timon, the average did not work out for him the way he was intending. But Leo looks to be in a pretty solid position going into three by three finals. So thanks to both of them for coming on. Really appreciate even if sometimes the results aren't exactly what you want. However, at this point, we're gonna be moving on to four by four. So make sure you guys are heading over to the website and competing and sticking around to the stream. We have Maddie Hiroto Anaba, who you guys may or may not know, who's uh, been killing it over in the Monkey League. And we have Max Shao, who was casting Monkey League uh, with uh, Maddie Hiroto Anaba just recently, both on for four by four. So we're excited to have them on stream right now. And uh, without further ado, take it away, casters.
And we're back. Now we're here with 4x4, the second smallest, even layered N by N puzzle in the WCA. <laughs> yes. Um, and also the second largest. Yes, so, that is what a 4x4 four four is. That is what a 4x4 four four is. So I'm Daniel Goodman, as always. Uh, I'm this Andreas is... Vitalis. Yeah, this uh, is where I introduce myself. Yeah. Yes. And we are here with Maddie and Naba and Max Xiao, who are two top 4x4 four four solvers. Uh, and you've seen both of them on stream before, so I'm sure you know and love them. Uh, but yeah, let's get started. So whenever you guys are ready, feel free to start your attempts. Good mm -hmm. luck. All right. Should we just be solving at our own pace, or should we like wait for the... Oh, yeah, you can solve at your own pace. Yeah. Okay. So can I like take off my headphones or? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Thank you. All right. Cool. So Maddie, um, or sorry, uh, yeah, Maddie has already started. Um, I know. I didn't. Or no, enough. he hasn't. Yeah, he's that, just. Oh, uh, that's warming up. Okay, uh, gotcha. gotcha. Actually, the hand warmers. Okay, now I'm going to start. Okay, cool. So Max is getting started on the first 4x4 four four self on stream today. Wow. So right now our number one uh, is Kieran with a 26 average. We saw him in 6x6 six six earlier. So that's just proving some uh, multiple event dominance there. But yeah. both of these guys are definitely capable of uh, beating a 26. Or at least Ooh. getting close to it, so. Kill all parody. 2376. Wow. 2376, there we go. That is an excellent start. See how Maddie does. Yeah. Yao used to be wow. something that was questioned on 4x4 four four too. For, yeah, and that's crazy. First introduced. Yeah, but and, I mean, now everybody uses Yao pretty yeah, much. Yeah, now if you, if you don't use Yao, you're, yeah. <laughs> you're the odd man. I don't, think, I don't think we've seen a top Redux solver in 4x4 four four in years. That would be interesting to see. Well, it looked like he had a bit of hesitation or lock up there. 27. Yeah. Still solid a solid solve. Yeah. Oh, it looks like Max is solving already. Yeah. Crazy fast turning. Yeah, really. Wow. 2496. Out of 24, that's a great start. Holy. 23 and 24. So we're counting 24. Maddie's starting up solve two. Ooh. Oh, looks like he had a few pauses there at the beginning. Mm. Looks like he's on three by three stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, last layer right now. Oh, he did get it's looking like it might be a yeah, high 20s, Ooh. maybe a 29, 28. Yeah, I think you're right. Looks like yeah, a 20, 92. Mm -hmm. Max doing very well in these scrambles so far, actually. Yeah. Right now, also, we have some new leaders uh, on our leaderboard. We've got Ari Ranzers Pearson in first place with a 25 average, and Timon in second with a 26. Wow. So right now, it seems like Max is definitely the number one contender to beat them. 2884. 28? That sounds... Is that, is that what you said? Yeah. I think that was a 28, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 2884 for Max. So not a great solve there, but definitely the first two will help him out. Mm. And Maddie's on his third solve. Yeah. Ooh. 
Wow. Oh, he's happy with that one. Yeah, yeah. Wait. What happened? It was a... Can't quite tell what that is, but he'll type it in for us. (laughs) (laughs) But he seemed happy with it, so that's always good. That's what you like to see. Let's see what it was. Uh... Oh, it's a 28. Oh, okay. So, oh, it's the same as the last one. Oh, okay. That's funny. Maybe that, maybe that, maybe it was just laughing. <laughs> that would make more Ooh. sense. Oh, and 26. That's not a plus two, it's 26. 26. Wow. Wow. So Max is cutting this one close. He is definitely in podium position right here. Um, but I don't know. Like, winning is going to, he's cutting it close uh, with, the, with the win potential. His current worst possible average is a 2660, which would put him wow. in third place. Um, but his yeah. best is a 2376, which would currently put him in first by a long shot. So we'll have to see. Whoa. 25. 25 for Matty. For Matty. That's good. That's definitely good. I think that's Not his quite best enough for a podium, but definitely yeah. really good. It might be enough to get top eight. Um, and for those who aren't aware, top eight will get you points with our uh, Cubing at Home point system. And, you know, so if, if Matty is trying to be an all rounder uh, and get that final big prize money, mm-hmm. then that'll definitely help out. Oh, it looks like he got a little parody there. Mm-hmm. Ooh, a 31. Um, Ouch. So this will likely put him in third place because that's going to give him that 26 average. Not what he was hoping for, but yeah, 2661 puts him in third right now. Okay. I can. I'm unmuted now. Okay, nice. Solid average. You're you're in third so far, so congrats. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Congrats. Surprisingly good, but it was also really inconsistent. Mm. My counting times were 24, 26, 28, so like... Yeah, yeah, um, it was kind of all over. It was a good start. Oh. Yeah. Was that a plus two for me? 29. Matt? 29, but I couldn't I tell if it was a plus two. two. Okay, we'll see what he puts in, but um, either way, that's his worst self, so it seems like it's going to be a 28.53 average. So I think that's good enough for top eight, but not quite going to be enough to podium. Um but yeah, I mean, both of you are going to get points from that at least, which is nice. Um, so yeah, congrats. Solid averages all around. Um, and yeah, yeah, I believe we're going to pass it over to our analysts for a full interview. But yeah, thank you to all both right. of you for joining us. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks for having, thanks for having me. me. Of course. See you, See you. guys. Hey everyone, we're back. Uh, the Cubers just did four by four, and uh, we have uh, myself and Stanley, Max and Maddie. Uh, we've seen them all before, and uh, happy to have them on again. So uh, hopefully, four by four went well for you guys. Uh, one thing we were really curious about is um, your participation in the, in the Monkey League. I know Maddie is a competitor in the Monkey League, and Max was invited to be a caster in, in the event. So. How was that experience like, and how does it differ from cubing at home? 
I'll go Kids first. Start. Oh. oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> like, I feel like a monkey league is a little more intense because it's head to head. You're just versing one person and that one person only. Then, um, since there's only six competitors, it's kind of a small comp. So keeping at home is a lot bigger, obviously. And um, what? Else? Yeah, it's the same from Monkey League and keeping at home because they're both point based. So then you get a leaderboard, and that's how you mm -hmm. the yeah. And I'm sure in Monkey League you have more casters who are always talking about you, right? So I'm sure that makes yeah. It a little extra nervous. These all this group of people yeah, are yeah, talking yeah. about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, um, Max was one of the people talking about the cubers. So yeah, how was your experience? Yeah. Um. Well, when Philip like messaged me on uh when when he messaged me just like to join him on commentary, I was kind of surprised because like I'm more used to being like I, I'm more I'm more used to being like a competitor rather than mm -hmm. somebody like talking about competitors. If that makes sense. Sure. Because, uh, like, yeah, with keeping at home, I'm always the one competing. I'm not, like, usually a caster or anything like that. And so, yeah, I was kind of surprised by that. And immediately I was a bit nervous because, like, I've never really done anything like this before. And so I think what I did to prepare was, like, pretty much I just, like, found one of Philip's Monkey, Lag Monkey League uh, videos. I just put it in the background and just, like, did solves. Pretty much just listening sure. uh, to his video to just, like, kind of see what it was like. And also, like, mm -hmm. familiarize, familiarize myself with, like, the regulations just to get myself kind of more knowledge about it. But, yeah, it was a really fun experience. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, Stanley, did you have anything to uh, ask these guys? Um, yeah, I guess, you know, continuing on the same sort of thread, um, you know, like, what, um, you know, obviously it's a great thing that, um, you know, Philip is doing for the community with all of his work that he's putting into this. But, um where do you see this going in the future? And do you think like, as you know, kind of a counterpart to a competition like keeping at home, do you think it's a good thing to continue having, you know, like specialized competitions where only like a select few top people compete, but do it like over a period of many weeks and just have it like always, you know, put in the spotlight like that? I feel like, cool. Yeah, I think we should have it more often because, and like for longer, because you get like you can have different competitors on, so you get to know the competitors more, like the solving style, and then like information about them. For sure. Taking that aspect. It's yeah, I agree with Maddie. Like pretty much, just like when you're having this super small competitions where like you're just um, watching like only a select few um, of the like what of the top of the competitive scene. It's pretty cool to see. Just like you can because because there's so little people, you're, there's more time for you to kind of like just observe their solving, kind of maybe even learn from them. And it's also really entertaining as well for the audience. And so I think it's kind of a win-win. Yeah, I think the the Monkey League is, is cool because you can start following and become fans of people and you can root for them as they compete across a whole series, um, which is sometimes hard to follow if you're, you know, in uh, an event with like hundreds and thousands of people. So it's good to bring attention uh to to certain people for sure but uh definitely having more types of competitions is, is a lot of fun um so uh max if you were in monkey league who would you want to race against wow um <laughs> that's honestly a hard decision i mean like because there's multiple sides to it i guess because like the selfishness in me kind of wants to like race against someone who isn't like as like prominent in the monkey league maybe somebody who hasn't been doing as well as like you know say timon or leo but if i had to choose somebody i don't know i mean i think maddie would be a really cool guy to get uh race against because like i already raced with him a lot like through uh facebook calls things like that we do lots mm -hmm. of people a lot together and so i guess it just feels more familiar to race with him even though he usually just crushes me but it was like, <laughs> an experience and and Maddie, if you were to suddenly become a caster in in the Monkey League or in some online big online competition, who would you want to cast the event with? Um, uh, Felix. Felix. I want to get his insight. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That'd be cool. Sounds good. All right, so uh, we are. About near the end of our interview segment, I uh, have to move on to uh, more events for today. 
But thank you guys so much for participating in all the online cubing activities you do. Uh, it's uh, been really cool to watch you solve, watch you commentate, and uh, thank you for providing so much value. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Take care, and uh, we'll we'll get on to uh, I believe Megaminx very soon. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cubing at Home 1.2. I'm your host, Keaton Ellis. It was a very good and interesting 4x4 segment that we just saw there, and uh, quite an interesting discussion about the Monkey League, the small, tight-knit league that is featuring not all of the solvers, but some of the fastest solvers in the world. And uh, we highly recommend checking that out. It's a great complement to Cubing at Home. At this time, though, we're going to be moving on to Megaminx. We have a very special guest for you guys today for Megaminx. We have the world record holder for it, Juan Pablo Honki, who has graciously decided to come on and do some solves here on stream for us. Last time we had uh, some people on for Megaminx a couple of times ago, we had uh, Laser Monkey and Andy Benny on. And they mentioned to us that Juan Pablo is one of the only people in the world who really knows Megaminx to the level that you need to be able to know it to be really, really fast at it. And so we're excited to see his solves here on stream. And we hope that you guys enjoy the content as well. So without further ado, take it away, guys. And we're back. We are here from Megaminx. We are joined by the one and only Juan Pablo Juan Key from yeah. Peru. Um, yeah. So today we're going to be just going through five Megaminx solves with him here. So welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for joining us. And whenever you're ready, feel free to get started. Thanks to you. So thanks. I need to go to Cubing at Home and then invent this Megaminx. So is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you can just click yeah. begin attempt uh, whenever you're ready. Okay, okay. Cool. Perfect. And then um, once you're there, can you angle your camera down so we can see the Megaminx? Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, a moment. Also, when you solve, you can take your headphones off because we're going to be commentating. So, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That's, that's good. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so begin attempt, right? Uh, yeah, you can begin your attempt now. Yeah. Do I need to record it, or that's not necessary? Oh, no, it should be fine because you're on stream. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I need to put it down. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. There we go. Okay. All right. One problem. All, All right, right, cool. So it's getting started on the first scramble there. Um, Juan Pablo, once you're done with that, maybe you can take your headphones off uh, just to be safe. I think he, he um, already took them off. Oh, he did? Okay, cool. I missed that. Cool. So, um, yeah, for those who don't know Juan Pablo, 
I don't really know what you're doing because this man <laughs> has been dominating Mega Minx for oh, a while yeah. now. Um, yeah, he's got the world record single and average, uh, 27 22 single and 30.39 average. So close to sub 30. <laughs> yeah. Just waiting on that, honestly, at this point. Um, Excuse me, I have a question. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, it says there is no timer there. So, how can I time myself? Can I use my cell phone? Maybe oh, yeah. Um, you can, yeah, you can uh, use whatever timer you have. Yeah, um, you can use a stack mat or. Yeah. yeah, I don't yeah, have a time right now. <laughs> can I use okay, a cell phone? I will put it in the yeah. screen so you can see. Yep, you can use a cell yeah, phone. Yeah, you, right. you can use a cell phone, don't worry. Thank you so much. Yep. So it seems like we're about to get started on the first solve here. Um, it's cool looking at his profile too, just seeing the massive improvement um, over time. Mm -hmm. And like pretty much all his all his PRs were national records. Um, and then eventually they started becoming continental records and then world and then, records. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's now just crazy. Just way ahead. Yeah, definitely. His first world records were actually in 2016. His first Megamix world records were back then. And um, yeah, since then Which he's just, was that at again? That was at, um, that was at US Nats 2016. Yeah, Nats. I thought yeah. it was Nats. Yeah. Crazy. It was up in Portland, I believe. Um, yeah, and that was back when it was a 35 single and a 40 average, and now he's yeah. cut both of those down by like almost 10 seconds. So yeah, <laughs> that's pretty wild. Jeez. Just the turning, and he doesn't really pause that much. It's Yeah, and he's on last layer here. Looks like. Yeah. There we go. Let's see. Wow. He knew the PLL, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Jeez. Cool. So the first solve is a 3203. Mm -hmm. um, was, it, was it okay? Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Can, keep con can um, I continue? Yeah, you can keep yeah. going. Yep. Keep going at your Thank pace. You so Very cool. polite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember I met Juan Pablo at, I believe, Nationals 2017, US Nationals. Mm -hmm. um, that was the first time I met him, and I remember we practiced three by three together for a little while. Um, I'm not sure if he even remembers that, but for some reason that sticks out in my mind. But such a mm -hmm. such a friendly guy, just so nice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So getting started here. Cool. Yeah, and he also said he hurt his pinky a little bit. So it's crazy that even with a bit of a mild injury and on an important <laughs> finger for Megaminx too, uh, bless you, <laughs> that he was able to uh, get a 32 on that first <laughs> ball. That's pretty wild. Sorry about that. Oh, no, you're good. I said bless you, but I think you're, uh, oh, <laughs> you're, you're both were out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't want it to be like hurt on stream. Oh, yeah. it was. <laughs> you're good, though. <laughs> Sneezing Cuba. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Anyway, it looks like he is making some pretty good progress here. Approaching last layer. Megaminx is just like a, you know, just flying fingers, <laughs> and yeah. then just suddenly you're on PLL. Like, that's what it is at a world class level, I feel. It is nuts. Um, oh, but this one does look like it's going to be a high 30. That looks like maybe a 38. Let's see what that comes in as. And right now he's like way ahead of the game. Like the first place right now is a 30, 39 average, which is still insanely good. But um, okay, that was a forty for Juan Pablo. Um, but yeah, he's got a thirty-two and a forty so far. Uh, big range there, but still really good times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, even a, a thirty-eight. That's what like top twenty still in Mega Mink single. Uh, yeah <laughs> officially i think yeah and it's crazy that that's his uh, worst solve yeah yeah it's insane 
Yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, it looks like you can see him uh, sort of bending his pinky there a little bit, <laughs> try to alleviate some of the some of the pain. But seems like he's still able to get really good solves despite that. All right, and he's off on solve three. He also seems to not use any table. Hmm. Yeah, which is very interesting. It is interesting. I know I'm personally the type with Megaminx to pretty much table abuse for the entire yeah. solve. Um, <laughs> and like, I know, I don't know, not too many people do it as extreme as I do, but definitely you see more table than what Juan Pablo does. And oh, and he's on PLL. It's about 30 seconds in, and he got wow. it. There we go. That looks like maybe a 33. Um, pretty very solid fast. solve. Yeah. He was saying beforehand that he, yeah, that was a 3370. Uh, he was telling us beforehand he averages around 30. Um, and so that's pretty wild. But obviously, like, we're not going to get quite that tier of solving because of his pinky, but, um, and also probably some stream nerves. But he said he's just here for fun. And that's definitely the best attitude for anything like, like mm -hmm. this. Um, and he seems to be doing great. Yeah. Pinky's very important because uh, it's the one that holds up the cube on the back. Definitely, yeah. Um, you need it to be strong. Totally yeah, there we go. He's trying to, trying to alleviate some of that pain there. <laughs> All he's got to do is be strong for 40 seconds, or really 30, and then, then he's good. <laughs> All right, and he's getting started. All right. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting to watch him solve. It just looks like... He's spamming TBS, and then suddenly he's, like, kind of doing PLL. Yeah. It's... I mean, I don't know how many people remember the uh, the controversial 441 uh, fake world record by Martin Telesforo, where he said he yeah. just improvised a that. bunch of moves and then got a J-perm. I mean, that's what <laughs> that's what Megaminx with Juan Pablo looks like. Yeah, exactly. Improvise and get a J-perm. <laughs> oh, it's taken him a while to recognize this PLL, but he gets it, it looks like. Yeah, there we go. And that was wow. about a 36. Um, let's see what exactly the time was. Yeah, it's crazy that the moves he's doing are actually fully intentional and like you know yeah. he, he sees pretty much all the pieces yeah. all around the puzzle. Like, it's, it's yeah, he never seems to really pause. And yeah, it's it's nuts on, on a on a dodecahedron that he's just it finding is. the pieces he needs so quickly. Yeah, because like on a dodecahedron, sure, there are six sides you can see at a time, but there are six sides you can't see at a time, too. Yeah. <laughs> and so like that's just, that makes it a lot harder. But it seems like he also solves like whatever he sees. He's not uh, mm. getting stuck on pieces like sometimes uh, people yeah. do. Yeah. I guess you've seen a lot of uh, Phillips selves. I don't know how much uh, you've commentated few. on those, but yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah I, mean, it, I think that's different top solving solver, styles, but, definitely. Yeah. Megamix is one of those events where there can be, like, really top solvers, but then there's just this one guy who's got, like, a commanding lead yeah. above, like, everybody else. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, so far yeah, he's got counting... to say that he's, he's just blazing ahead of everyone else. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right now, definitely, he's the dominating solver. Um... Oh man. Yeah, he's got Okay, his best possible average right now is a 34.10. His worst possible average is still going to win. <laughs> um and <laughs> we'll see what he oh actually gets. God. At this point it's really just about um okay, it, it was he ended up getting his worst possible average which was a 36.90 and that's going to take it. Um <laughs> There you go. Looks like oh looks like God. he won. <laughs> congrats. Oh, really? oh, congrats. <laughs> yeah, solid average. Yeah, um, totally. I'm sure yeah, I mean, I'm sure the 240s weren't what you were hoping for, but still, solid times all around. Nice 32 and 33. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And it, it looks like, like... It was really bad sauce because I have a little pain here, and it's like, I wasn't able to grab my, to bring my Mega Mix in a good way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it, I think it's fine, the yeah. circumstances. All right. And now what can I do? Here it says video URL. Oh, um, you should be fine oh. with that. Yeah, you don't need to. You're on the video. You're okay. Yeah. Yeah. But um but yeah, I, now we are going to pass it over to our analysts and they're going to have a bit 
more of a longer discussion with you, Juan Pablo. But um, yeah. thank you very much for joining us. It's been a good time. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it was Great good to see, see you guys. You. Yeah, you too. See you later. You see ya. Hey, welcome back, uh, Stanley and myself. We're joined with uh, Juan Pablo Wanki, who just did his uh, Mega Mix average. So, if you guys remember back to one of the uh, one of the much older cubing at homes, we asked uh, Philip Lewicki and Andy Denny just what draws them to Mega Minx. and they said the following: They said that Mega Minx is fun because it makes you feel like you're plunging into chaos because there are so many pieces. And you can't see anything, so you have to just try your best to to do with what you have. And so they were talking about how difficult the event was, and then they said, "Well, Juan Pablo is invincible, and somehow he can manage it." So I just wanted to to get your um, you know personal uh, opinion on just you know what they said about Mega Minx being chaotic and what your what your view on that was.
uh, if he okay. can. Yes, I think we're good. Now, now it's fine again. Yeah, sorry about that. Yes. I didn't hear right, no your problem. last part. Oh, yeah, I just wanted so to know. Um, yeah, so people described Megaminx as uh, a chaotic event. Um, and apparently interviews are chaotic events too, but uh, people describe Megaminx as a chaotic event. What are your thoughts on that? I think that it's kind of true. I think it depends on the perspective of the of the person. For example, I remember that when I got my first Megaminx, it was a Sheng Show back then in 2013, maybe. Mm -hmm. And when I solved it, it was really fun for me. It was like a 3v3, but I needed to do like some similar steps in a longer way. Like there are like 12 tools, so it's kind of similar. And it was then when I decided that, okay, this is an event that I like. And um, even that it has like a lot of colors, it may be chaotic to some people, but I decided that for me, it's not going to be like that. It was going to be like, uh, for example, it's a way that you see your 3v3. I decided that the mega mix was going to be like my 3v3, that it was going to be like my normal cube. So I decided to change like the white be opposite to yellow, so it can be like really similar to a 3v3. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I was going to start to practice, so it can be like my main puzzle, and it was not going to be like, for example, when someone sees a mega mix like a scramble, they think like, okay, that's going to take like some hours, a lot of time, like there are too many pieces. But I decided that I was not going to say it like that. I was going to say it like my normal cube, like my main puzzle. So I think that it depends on the perspective. If someone wants to say it like something that has a lot of pieces, a lot of colors, and it's like really difficult, they're going to say it like that. In my case, I decided that it was going to be my main puzzle, and I was going to look at it like, like the same way that you see a 3 by 3 like really normal. So yeah, that's my way to say it at the moment. I totally didn't expect that. That is so cool. That is, uh, yeah, just a different frame of mind. I guess all these people, uh, I mean, for Andy Denny, Megaminx is probably his main event, right? But both of those guys do a fair bit of 3x3 three three and other puzzles. So perhaps they only feel that way because, um, yeah, because uh, of a comparison or something. But that's that's so interesting. Um, yeah, I guess I, I hope uh, that you understand me. I find my myself to explain it. Oh no, that makes it makes total sense. Uh, it looks like you just said Megaminx is the normal, so you know <laughs> don't don't treat it as anything intimidating or yeah extra extra complicated. That's that's interesting. Um, did you have any questions, uh, Stanley, for this really interesting guy? Uh, yeah, I mean, so, uh, I think it's, uh, a pretty unique aspect of, you know, your own solving that, uh, with the S2L blocks, you're neutral for your, this first block, right? Yeah. yeah so what I, are your thoughts on that overall? I think that... Yeah. So what are your thoughts on it overall? Like between like fixed blocks or just, you know, block neutral? I think that makes like a lot of difference because... When you have only a, it's like three three. When you start with white, you only have one choice that is white. But if you are neutral, you can solve with any color you want, and that's going to help you to choose like the easiest one, like the best one for you. So when I solve Mega Mix, I try to do like the same. Not only since S12, I only I I also do it since F12. Like sometimes when I'm solving some F12 pairs, like for example the first two or the first three pairs. I can see maybe some blocks of the S12 that are really easy, and I solve it, and I try to preserve like that block so I can keep doing the F12. So at the end, I think there are like a lot of ways to do it, but I think that each solve is a different way, at least for me. So sometimes I do like, for example, the I think there is something called like the valid method, I think. Yeah. That yeah. he solves like uh, two times F12, right? Like the first the white one, and then one be before the last layer. So sometimes that's all I do that because that's like the best way that I have seen that. So each solve is different and it depends on the person. If you only want to do like the same order, that's your way to do it. Uh, I think that it can be a little bit better if you do like any block that is like the easiest one. That's going to help you to do more colors, more blocks and to have like a good way to improve. 
So that's the way I say it. Super interesting. I guess this is why he's the best in the world. Yeah. All right. So that was really illuminating. Uh, looks like we're a little bit out of time. So. We... Oh. Uh, well. I'm sorry. My uh, it was it was my 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 turn for my my hardware to freak out. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was it was really it was really illuminating. Um, I. For the longest time, we were like, yeah, I guess Megaminx is just a really chaotic event. But um, to some people who incorporate it into just their their worldview, like this is how I see puzzles, and this is just what puzzles are, and this is the norm. Uh, really, not that not that crazy after all. I don't know. Maybe after watching this, more people can really think about their limits because uh, I think this is just uh, something where people could just need to redefine what they think is possible. That was super interesting. All right. Well, uh, all right. So let's move on to uh, the next segment. We're really close to the end of Cubing at Home. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for being on the stream and uh, solving some Megaminx. It was a real pleasure. And uh, take care. Thanks to you guys. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cubing at Home 1.2, our second competition of our first season. Uh, Pure Mix is currently open right now for those of you who are interested in doing it. But before that, I would like to give a big shout out to Juan Pablo Juanqui for being willing to come on to our stream. And I hope that you guys learned something and enjoyed some of the world's fastest Mega Minx times that you can ever see. We're moving on to Pure Mix right now. However, unfortunately, due to a scheduling error, uh, we will not be having anyone on for the event. However, it is still open, and it is still completely up to you guys to see who gets the fastest time. There are already some sub two averages on here, so I'm uh, very confident that you guys will be doing an awesome job getting some really fast pyraminx times at home, as you normally would. We're going to be taking just a minute here to make sure that Pyraminx wraps up at 4.15, but we're going to be moving on to our 3x3 finals, which has some of the world's fastest competitors, um, and they are definitely faster than any of us. I uh, got as close as I possibly could this time at 10th, but we have a ton of fast people coming on, and I'm sure that you guys will have a blast watching them. So... Without further ado, we're going to be moving on with uh, three by three finals. But take the next couple of minutes, finish up your pyramid solves, make sure you get those in. Points for that will still count for the total leaderboard, and there obviously will be podium gift cards given out for our winners there. And of course, if you're doing really well, we will ask for your video. But we will not be having anyone on stream for pyramid, and we'll be moving directly into three by three finals.
And we are back here. With we are the here. First, we are here with the first uh, matchup of the finals. Uh, we That's have right. The first seed, Leo Borromeo, uh, two time keeping a home champion uh, That's against right. Kieran, who is uh, the eighth seed in this tournament. Mm -hmm. um, so, so uh, this is Kieran's first time in finals, which is pretty exciting. Um, he had a really solid round two average. And yeah, we'll see how he's able to perform here against Leo. Yeah. So once they're ready, they can start on solve number one. We're not going to be going exactly simultaneously this time, but um, it is still going to be first to five wins. So whoever gets five wins against the other one first will move on in the bracket. Okay. And you can All vote right. in the chat too for who you think is going to win. Yes. Um, one for Leo, two for Kieran. Yes, feel free to start. All right. I don't think I've ever seen Kieran do three by three, actually. Yeah, me neither. Um, this is going to be interesting. Leo getting started with a seven twenty three. Definitely something beatable for Kieran. Yeah. So we'll see how he's able to do here. Nice turning. Mm -hmm. See what that was? Oh, one nine! Wow, and Kieran takes the first solve. Wow, wow. Kieran takes wow. it by point oh four. That's insane. Close, very close game. And Kieran is a fellow Green Cross only solver, so I can actually understand what he's doing. <laughs> I'm good to go. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Yeah. Thanks. Wow, a very quick look there for Leo. Yeah. It's just off. Oh. Some slow turning on. Wow, wow. an 805 for Leo. Lockups on that last layer. <sighs> Let's see if Karen can beat that. Looks like you will. Let's see, it's going to be Nine, close. 944. 944, not quite. Oh. So that's going to be Leo's that's with an 8. It is 1 1. <laughs> wow. Nice. We see that reaction from Leo there. Good stuff. That was right. new GB. Mm -hmm. I've learned that one. <laughs> Good stuff. So an 8 with a new ZB. All right. And whenever you guys are ready, you can get started on solve number 3. It is a tied match right now, so mm -hmm. as close as it can be. All right. Whoa, we are flying through this one. Oh, but it's a six forty three. Not even not sub six. Yeah. We do see a lot of sub sixes from Leo, so <laughs> maybe next solve. But a six forty three is still solid. Not much fours anymore. Hmm. <laughs> Oh. Hello. Finishing all the solve. Didn't look too happy with it. Let's see what it was. 10.76. Uh, 10.76. Oh, yeah. So far, a um, 7, 9, and 10 for Kieran, so. Maybe the so mirrors not are, what hoping for, but. are in there a bit. Mm. You guys can go when you're ready. Yeah, whenever you're ready. So this is going to be solve number four. Mm -hmm. So far, Leo has a lead, but it's not a commanding one. It is 2-1. Kieran could easily come back from this. Oh, but Leo just right on last layer there. 619. Six, Solid solve. Flew through that one. Leo was kind of a face saying that was a safety solve. <laughs> um... Nine one four. Oh, nine for Kieran, which is gonna bring it bring Leo's lead up to three one. Dang. I will say though, going against a keeping at home champion, <laughs> even getting one win is an accomplishment, I would say. Sure. So we'll see. We'll see if he can maybe get like two or three potentially. But 
Let's see. Uh, this is this opportunity for bringing it to game point. Fast clapping. Rami style. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Leo's just yeah. memeing on all of us. <laughs> Love to uh, see it. You can start whenever you're ready, Leo. <laughs> Kieran's already gets, getting into it. And he's wow. finished off that solve. 652. There we go. 652. That was a good solve for Kieran. Oh my god. Oh, and the 620 is going to take that one. Bring it to that a four one. So bad. <laughs> <laughs> Needed it a little six on that, and you got it. Looked it. like he sped it up almost when you said that <laughs> Kieran got a six. Yeah, I have a speed yeah. run. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you got a speed run. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, let's see if we can. So whenever you guys are ready, you can get started. It is 4-1 now, so this is match point. Kieran had a bit of a comeback before. Oh my god. This solve is going well. 592. I don't think Kieran. <laughs> yeah, no PLL skip. Nothing like that. So that seems like a pretty standard solve. 654. Still a great time. Solid. <laughs> but... But <laughs> it's, it's not, not going to be quite enough. Really. So that is going to be the end of this match. That is 5-1 for Leo, and he's going to move on to your top four. Thank you, Kieran, for joining us. You put up a solid mm -hmm. fight. And congrats, Leo, for moving on. Yeah, it's been a good time. And we'll see you guys later. See Thanks. Thanks, guys. See you. Welcome back, everyone. We're joined with our fourth and fifth seeds from the 3x3 three three second round, Luke Tixon and Max Xiao. And they will be competing head-to-head, -head, as you all know. Uh, first to five solves wins. So, yeah, if the competitors get scrambled, just give me a thumbs up when they're ready. Yeah, and these guys both got sub, uh, sorry, not sub, low seven averages in the second round. Yep. So uh, they're they're pretty close. I mean, they are the fourth and fifth seed, so uh, right next to each other in the rankings. Yes, for sure. And uh, both former All finalists. Right. Yeah, they're both ready. So three, two, one, go. All right. 
uh, it's great to see both of them have fantastic camera quality. Oh, for sure, yeah. And uh, yeah, I could. I was recognizing F two L cases and uh, OLLs and PLLs on Max Chow's cube as he was practicing yeah. uh, on standby. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Max All right. And salty. He's he's got seven fifty. Oh, he's going pretty fast. Five fifty seven. Looked like an old awesome. There. Awesome. And Luke will take the first solve. See, I, I did not see what Max got, but it was not. It was a 750. Okay. 750. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And, uh, yeah, Luke is one of the three Lukes in the, in the finals. And yes. uh, I just did a check, and apparently five Lukes are in the top 50. So the top 50 is 10% Luke. That's yeah, all right. <laughs> so, yeah, looks like Luke is ready. Max is ready. Three, two, one, go. All right, Max, Max is getting now. a head start. Oh, that looks like a pretty nice Ooh. last layer. Yeah, fortunately, uh, you 573 from. full step. Luke is going. Looks like he's getting a ZBL. Doesn't doesn't know the case. Looks like a COLL EPLL combo. And Max will take this one. Both competitors getting their wins with a five. Very good stuff. And it's tied up at one. Awesome. So uh, both competitors have very good chances to advance. It's uh, definitely not over yet. So we'll see how they handle this pressure, but also this opportunity. Yeah, for sure. And it looks like our competitors are just about ready. So three, two, one, go. Looks like we're starting to see a pattern. Max is using a little bit less inspection, but that doesn't mm -hmm. stop him. He's still getting a 651 to Luke's 692. So he will so he will take the lead two to one. Yeah, Max really got the jump on that that first off. He started turning real fast after the cross. Yeah. Those yeah. yellow cross too. Nice. Oh, very nice. If you don't know always Max, a challenge for me. So I'm yeah. I've been working on it. If you don't know, Max is primarily a white cross solver, so it's a bit of foreign territory, but Still makes it work. All right. Okay. Max Thumbs up ready. for Max. And uh, Luke's taking a little bit of time. All right. All, All right. right. He's got two, one, go. Taking a little while to recognize for Max. Luke is just smooth sailing, looks like. Not a very fortunate case, but Max 829 will actually win against Luke's 904. An unfortunate last layer case there for Luke. And it's up 3-1 for Max now. Yeah, this is uh, really coming down to the wire. Max is putting a lot of pressure on Luke. Yeah, definitely. From the same area as well, so they're used. To, they're probably very used to you know competing alongside one another, but it's mm -hmm. a totally different dynamic head to head. Okay, let's see. Looks and like Max is ready. And three, two, one, go. Okay. There we go. Uh, Max going first, as always. Yeah. Looked, Looked like, like uh, had a little, little bit of a hitch in the F2L. Yeah. Last layer is not going extremely well, but Luke getting a uh, 9.54. But he'll win that solve with a 9. Oh, my God. <laughs> Three to two. That's pretty sad. Sometimes it happens, yeah. you know. Sometimes it happens. Yeah. And, you know, people in the chat, it looks like these guys are going slower than average, but it sucks being on stream. It's tough. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot of pressure when you uh, when every every second yeah. counts. You may be at home, but there's still you know a lot of people, and that counts. 
All right, and so we got the thumbs up from Max. Let's see from Luke. All right, three, two, one, go. Yeah, because, you know, with let's say it's a 500-person Twitch audience, that's, you know, what might be in the crowd for Nationals Finals. So... Mm -hmm. Except people at Nats Finals can't chat at you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, there's some additional pressure here. Yeah. Uh, 701, 701 for Max. And Luke, uh, oh. 773. So 4 2 for Max. And that will be match point as well. Yeah, but uh, Nationals definitely has a whole new type of pressure. I mean, when you're solving, the, the room is dead silent, and you can hear the sound of your cube reverberate. Yeah, and here it's just you're solving at home. So it's kind of a balance of two different pressures. Um, you know, one, one force mitigates pressure. One, you know, absolutely makes it a lot stronger. And it looks like both competitors are ready. Three, two, one, go. And also at Nationals, you know, another feature that isn't there is our commentary. <laughs> right. Can you imagine if this if we're just in a corner? Just talking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like, Nationals has streams. You know, it has commentary, right. but I'm sure the Definitely. competitors aren't, you know, listening to it, yeah. exposing themselves and that's to an it. 879. Max. Luke just and, needs to uh, be better than that, and it looks like he'll get it. So it's four to three now. We're really, you know, bringing this close. Um, and yeah. Can, can Luke win two in a row? Yeah. That's all it comes down to, really. Um, Looks like Max is very nearly ready. Um, and Luke is taking his time a little bit. He's ready. Three, two, one, go. Max is using the drop the hand warmers right as inspection starts strategy. <laughs> very solid. Works for Max Park, so that's something going for it. Oh, he's wow. going to go for the full set 535. What a good solve. Yeah, that, that was, was a really low move count last layer, too. Yeah. Especially F F2 as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. that was really great. And that will seal it for Max. He'll be moving on to the top four, the semifinals. And yeah, that will do it for this matchup. Yeah. And next up, we have Lucas Etter and Samir Agarwal. And I just noticed all their last initials rhyme Luke G, Luke T, Luke E. But yeah. Uh, yeah, next up we have Luke E and Samir. So uh, we'll catch you later and uh, definitely cheer for the Cubers coming up. And we are back. We're here for three by three finals, the, your third matchup. Um, this is the matchup between Lucas Etter and Samir Agarwal. 
Um, this is pretty exciting matchup we've got here. Yeah. Um, oh, we've got the wrong name, it looks like. Uh, <laughs> if we could get that fixed. We have Luke Tixon. It is not Luke Tixon. <laughs> um, it is Samir, but we'll get that fixed in just a second. Um, and yeah, uh, whenever you guys are ready, uh, please begin. Okay, I think it should be fixed now. Yeah. Ready. Let's see. So Lucas is both known for his 490 oh. world record back in 2015. Oh. Not quite what he was hoping for in that solve. Yeah, Luke like had a little have, bit of trouble there. Yeah, quite a few issues in a row. Mm -hmm. My computer isn't muting, so. Oh, um, in that case, you can take your headphones. Or are you wearing headphones? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, just try turning it down as much as you can. Yeah, but the audio is still there. It's the same. Oh, you can deafen. Oh, yeah. We can, yeah. Can deafen. Is there a way I can mute Discord or something? Yeah, yeah. you can deafen yourself. If you right-click on your name, uh, there should be a deafen option. Sorry for the difficulties, everybody. There we go. Um, we're waiting on... Uh, Lucas's time and Samir's time or Samir's solve. Lucas finished his first solve, but we don't have the time yet. Lucas disappeared. It looks like. Yeah. Oh, oh, Lucas is back. Um, Lucas, can you show us the time. Uh, can you say it out loud too after each solve? Eight forty-seven. Oh, gotcha. seven fifty. So Samir plus two. absolutely takes this. Oh, but yeah, that plus is a two. plus two. Yeah, okay. plus two. So Lucas is going to take the first solve here with an eight. What? <laughs> <laughs> you can hear the shock in his voice. <laughs> All right, are we are we good for second solve? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Both with uh, so so for solves for them. Uh, see if uh, we get better ones this time. Yeah. Ready. for Lucas. Let's see what the time was. Jesus. Lucas, what was your time? It was 9.17. Oh, is that oh, another pass too? But Samir takes it still. That's going to be a 9.09. Oh, wait. Can we see that? Um, oh, that's a plus two. Um, Can you hold the cube up and let us see if it's a DNF? No, that's just a plus two. That's good. Yeah. So Samir takes it. And 909 is going to take it. <laughs> Crazy. We have so far an eight winning and a nine winning. <laughs> so not normally what you'd see in three by three finals here, but still exciting stuff. I'm not going to plus two this one. <laughs> Yeah, that's two plus twos in a row for uh, Samir. Mm. Jeez. Ready.
Whoa. What was that time for fast. Lucas? Yeah, that looks good. 552. 552. Wow. All right, wow. let's see if Samir can beat that. Uh oh. Not going to happen. No, Lucas is going to take this one. All right. So Lucas makes it a 2 1 lead. Yeah. All right. So this is solve four. Whenever they're ready, they're gonna get ready. started. Cool. All right. Oh, Ooh. nice. Looks like a ZB from Lucas. Six eighty-five. Six eighty-five. All right. Um, is it's it a plus fine. two? No, it's fine. Okay. And Samir with a nine. So nine. Lucas is going to take this one too, bringing it up to three to one. Sizable lead for Lucas. All right. Seeming to be struggling a bit. Yeah. So Not getting the greatest times that we've seen, but mm -hmm. Lucas is doing his normal thing. Fives and yeah. sixes. Let's see how he does. Ooh, wow. Oh, man. Wow. Was that? 563. Was that five? 563, wow. wow. All right, can Samir beat that? No. Nope, 723. So Lucas is going to take that one with a 5, um, and that brings him to a 4-1 lead, making this match wow. point. It's crazy that uh, the only solve uh, I think Samir has taken so far, he had a plus two, right? Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. He won with a plus two. You don't see that often at all. This could be match point. Samir yeah. is in inspection right now. About to get started. Cool. Ready. Eight fourteen. All Lucas mm -hmm. needs is an eight here. Well, really a seven. Not all eights would do it. <laughs> Let's see if you can safety that. Yeah. And it looks, looks like, like he does. That's, that's an easy high six. Yeah, six ninety six. Nice, great. So Lucas is going to take this one five to one, meaning wow. Lucas Etter will move on to the top four. Um, and yeah, congratulations to both of you. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Um, I'm sure we'll Thanks. see you both in future cubing at homes. And Lucas, we'll see you in just a bit. Thank Later, you guys. See you. Later. Of course. See ya.
Hello, everyone. You're about to watch match four in the finals of Cubing at Home 1.2. So uh, up next, we have number two seed Luke Reiser versus number seven seed Maddie Hirodo Inaba. So uh, these guys are getting prepared. Uh, what thoughts do you have um, going into this match? Okay. Uh, yeah. Looks like... Luke is ready, but Maddie is preparing still. Let's give him a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah, in any case, um, the competitors both have the chronograph link uh, in analysis, right? Um, make sure you have that open. Yeah, and the uh, winner of this match goes up against Lucas Etter, and that's that's going to be a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Both of these competitors and as and, and Lucas are all monkey league competitors as well. I might add. Yeah, yeah, these guys are are ready to to race online. Yeah. Uh, looks like Maddie's having a little difficulty getting the scrambles, so we'll give yeah. him a, a little time, and uh, hopefully that doesn't throw off Luke too much. Yeah, and uh, hopefully we can get it and, get it working soon. And uh, Luke, you have the you have chronograph open, right? Cool, cool, okay. Let's, so we're just waiting for Maddie. All right, looks like he has the scramble. And Maddie, do you have chronograph open? Just give me a thumbs up if you do. Cool. Yep. Okay, great. So yeah, just give, and then also just, yeah, once you're both ready, just give me a thumbs up. Um, and we'll get started. Thumbs up. All right. Excellent. Three, two, one, go. All right, both competitors really taking their time. Inspection. Yeah, that was a pretty fluid solve for Luke. 687. And Maddie will take... A 631. 631. So Maddie gets the first point here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, off to a good start. Both competitors getting sixes. You know. Oh, and we uh we just lost Luke. Yes. So does that mean one of us is now showing up on the stream? I I think it's very misaligned. Oh, okay. Uh, well, if it's me, I hope I don't look too bad. Different fragments. Oh, different. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> yep. Luke. Luke G is back. Sorry about the technical right. difficulties. Yeah. All right. So, Maddie looks like he's still scrambling, and we just need to get the thumbs up on the ready. And uh, is Luke ready? Yep. Uh, looks like he's using his computer. Right. Now he's good. Yep. All right. Three, two, one, go. Uh oh. We good. <laughs> All right, so there there might be a discrepancy between the time they start. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. We can watch each solve separately. That's a good part. Yeah. Eight, three, nine. Okay, and Maddie 7 gets a 702. That's 2-0 for Maddie right now. Unfortunately, yeah, this is this is a little bit scuffed right now, but that's fine. We're making it work. All right, Maddie is scrambled, it looks like. We'll wait for the ready from these competitors. And it looks like, yeah, Maddie's ready. Luke is still taking a moment yeah. to uh, readjust himself. Yeah. Good. All right. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, it's very important to uh, adjust yourself because uh, the next race really isn't or shouldn't be affected by the previous one. Yeah. And uh, a lot of sports are like that. 
You know, right. I, I play tennis myself, and no matter how badly you lose a point, there's always a next point. Yeah. So, a point's 745. 7 4. And a 7 12. 7-1. So, he'll take it to 3 0. Yeah, and the trick is just to, to keep it together, even uh, when things aren't going your way. Yeah. Yeah. A lot easier said than done, but yeah, these guys are steady. Maddie is just about, it looks like. All right. Um, all right. Three, two, one, go. All right. This all looking a little cleaner from. Yeah. 748. 748. Maddie gets a 667. So it's 4-0. Match wow. Yeah, Maddie is really putting the pressure on Luke. Okay. Maddie. Good. Ready. We're reading on Luke a little bit. Want to take his time. Good strategy. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right, both competitors. Be very careful in the inspection. For sure. That can be the difference sometimes between, you know, the success and the failure of the competitor. And it looks like yeah, Maddie is not happy. It's getting a 607. Luke, yeah, he's not. They have you done with an eight. So Maddie will take this one 5 0. Yep, Maddie moves on to compete against Lucas Etter. Um, who, uh, from what I heard, just got a bunch of fives and kind of steamrolled past Samir. So it's going to be definitely, definitely a competitive race. Um, but up next, we have Leo versus Max Xiao. And uh, these are familiar faces, but hopefully they'll, they'll bring us some, some new exciting races. So For sure. I totally didn't mean to rhyme. But... All right, let's uh, let's move on to the the next round. Congratulations, uh, good job, and uh, we'll see you around. And we are back. We're here with our first match of the semifinals, which is going to be Leo Barmeo versus Max Xiao. Um, mm-hmm. This both of these guys were able to defeat their respective opponents, yeah. and now they're going up against each other. So both very qualified competitors. And whenever you guys are ready, you can get started. And of course, you can vote in chat. 
uh, on who you think is going to win. Struggling a bit on that one. Yeah, 762 for Leo. Let's see what uh, Max is able to get on this one. It's funny, there are some names in cubing that just do very well. Max, there are a lot of Maxes. You got a lot of Lukes. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of Daniels. <laughs> True. And you only need one Leo. <laughs> All right, let's see what that was. Uh, oh, wait, is that the oh, time? 768, there? is that the yeah. time? 768? Yeah, yeah, I have it. Right, Can cool. I see timer? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, so, what was Leo's? Leo, was yours a low 7? Seven? 762. Seven, oh, okay, wow. So, <laughs> Leo wins by 0.06. Wow. I, got it. I don't even full step either, so it's kind of embarrassing, but yeah. <laughs> oh, well. All right, let's see. Let's see what's able to happen on this Next solve. So it is 1 0 right now. First to All five right. will take it. Max going first on this one. <laughs> a little bit of a camera mishap from our caster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fortunately, my camera's not on screen. So. A 6 7 2. two. For Max and Leo. Oh, it looks is, like Leo oh, is going to beat that. Whoa! Oh my, my God. gosh, for Leo. Four. Oh. 463. Wow. I believe that's the first four of our stream. Yeah, I think it is. That's insane. All right, a four from Leo. Great solve. What you love to see. All right. And so oh, Leo yeah. is going to take that one. Max put up a great fight on that solve with the six, but it just wasn't enough for a four. <laughs> We got a lot of boom Tetris is in chat. Yes. Oh, Tetra. <laughs> Not sure where the Tetris thing started. I think it was Philip. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whenever people get fours now, it is you just say boom Tetris. Um. And it looks like Max is off. But, oh Whoa. wow! Is that a skip of some sort? I couldn't tell, but yeah, that six thirty two. Leo's using up his inspection here. Whoa. Leo's flying through this one as well. Really? Oh, yeah, 585. 585. He's going to take it. That's a close <laughs> match, but still. Leo takes it, making it 3 nothing. 3 0. Oh, man. We have not seen somebody with, um, with 0 in a while, but Max has been really close with a few of these, so yeah. I think it's only a matter of time. But of course, Leo is a super talented solver here, so. And of course, whoever loses this match will end up in the third place match. Um, and podium is, of course, a pretty big deal, so. Mm -hmm. All of these competitors have a pretty good shot at that. Yeah. Leo with a 571. 571. Didn't even seem that fast. That was yeah. insane. And Max with a 601. Oh, so close. 601. Low sixes so don't cut it against Leo. Yeah, that's insane. We've gotten, I believe, Jeez. two fives and a four from Leo. Four um, oh. He's just going four oh so far. Jeez. He's one point. <laughs> <laughs> Max is just hoping for that one point here. Let's see if he can get it. It's definitely yeah. possible, but Leo is on a roll. Like with this sort of momentum. I don't see how anybody could beat him. I like, I don't know. I put my money on him taking this this comp. Let's see how he does. Yeah. Uh oh. Eight eleven. <sighs> and Dang. Max with a six seventy takes yeah, this point. Max takes oh. that one. That is yeah. gonna be it. Five to one. one. Or sorry, four to one. I'm speaking too fast. <laughs> <laughs> it is, <laughs> Leo has not won. <laughs> it is four to one. I did like seven pairs. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to like, uh, I entered my pair. I had to do it. I had to take it out, do a demo, and enter. Oh, wow. Seven <laughs> pairs is awful. I didn't feel my cards. <sighs> Uh oh. 
Six thirty four. That Let's is see what Max gets goal. here. Yeah. Whoa. Ooh. Oh, by point oh one, Max takes this one. Point oh, that was so, that's so close. I can't believe it. Insane. All right, Max takes it. Oh my god. Two, Max. That's the one point. You're down. You're down to the seconds here. All right, that's insane. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> We almost saw a tie there. <laughs> we were actually going right into the next song. Yeah. Oh, but he's yeah. getting an eight. Oh, no. An eight for Leo, not what you want to see. Oh, my God. Jesus. The next is turning very fast, but will he be able to get sub eight on this? Oh, oh. What was it? Oh, the casual stop. Oh, oh, no. Casual stop, Leo not what you want. Leo eight, takes six, it. Four. Five Wait, to two. You won. You got it. <laughs> no, the one time I did yellow right. cross, I have to get a 10. Okay. <laughs> All All right. Right. Oh, well. well, it was close. It was really close, but it is five to two. Yeah. And there we go. Um, so Leo is going to move on to finals, and Max will be back with me and Andreas in just a bit mm -hmm. uh, for the third place match. Before that, yes. we have to wrap up semifinals, so um, Phil and Stanley will be back with that. Mm -hmm. See you guys. See ya. Hello and welcome back. This is the second semifinals match. Uh, this time it features Lucas Etter and Matty. So uh, Matty was responsible for the defeat of uh, one Luke prior to uh, this round. So let's see what he'll do against Lucas Etter. All right, so competitors are preparing the first scramble. Uh, we're really hoping for a fantastic match. Thumbs up for Ready, as always, and we we'll good to go. And we'll up here. Luke is doing some TPF show. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. He's ready. Maddie's ready. Right, three, two, one, go. Keeping the TPS up right into inspection. <laughs> Maddie's going now. Looks like he's having a bit of a rough start. But, um, just, uh, a bit of better time. Maddie's not happy with that. Uh, a lot of PL up, but Maddie will get a 680. 724. 724. Okay. Maddie takes the first point here. Yeah, the timing is out. That's good. Hey, what? Yeah, thought at the same time. Uh, yeah, I think we do for this. Um, Now 
Maddie is ready. Lucas focusing on that warm up. All right, three, two, one, go. Lucas with a little hiccup yeah. there. Maddie looks like he's finishing okay. 646. 776. Mm. Yep. Six versus seven once again. Maddie takes it two to zero. Going into our third solve right now. Ready. Lucas wants to get a little bit. Prepared. All right. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, I wonder if how many people, upon seeing Lucas Hatter's TPS, become intimidated. Yeah. It's good. Oh, Phil is back. All right. Um, we're going. Yeah, it took both of all kind of long, but um, Lucas... 534. Oh, and it's a 534. Jeez. He's and a 982 for Maddie. He solves looked quite a bit longer, but, you know, sometimes, you know, it's not how they seem. Yeah, so these things can be pretty deceptive. Yeah, Luke, Lucas will get his first point against Maddie here, so it's two to one. Maddie's ready. Lucas is also ready. Three, two, one, go. This is TPS. Six forty four. 44 versus a 526. Maddie, three to one in his favor. These just smooth solves can just do it sometimes, you know. Like no these fries. Fives are, just, these fives are scary. Just straight to the point. All right, Lucas is going for Alex once again. Trying to make sure he has everything on point. That is ready. Lucas will probably want to just keep turning. Keep <laughs> doing. All right. Three, two, one, go. Ninety-seven. Okay, six ninety-seven. Those were some clean turnings at the end. Oh, that was that was a pretty nice last layer for Maddie, but he'll still get an eight twenty-two. Unfortunately, the F two L didn't quite do it for him right there. But it's three to two. Maddie still has the advantage. You know, pretty close game here. <laughs> Timing those PLLs. Yes. One might say that's optimal. Okay. Right. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Maddie has it. A loop play with turn. Keep turning. Here we go. All right. Good. Three, two, one, go. Six twenty-eight. Six twenty-eight. And Maddie will take a seven. I can't quite see the seven forty-five. 
but it's tie game at three. It's just, you know, best of three now, which is pretty intense. It'll be interesting to see what these competitors do with the timing his PLLs. Maddie's ready, but we're going to wait on Lucas. Maddie's yeah, all these look at, look at his hand strats for meditative purposes. <laughs> yeah, he is the Jedi after all, right? Yeah, all these competitors have different uh, rituals in their preparation. All right, and we see Lucas's thumb. All right, three, two, one, go. Six nineteen. Six nineteen. Six nineteen. And an eight oh three. So Lucas takes back this um, match point four three. Up from yeah. you know, three to one earlier, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, after being cubing from behind all all this time, Lucas is now ahead. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's some pretty intense stuff. He must uh, be feeling really good about the momentum. Yeah, this is the first time I've really seen a, a competitor process that uh, timing the PLLs during their warm up. Yeah, for sure. We'll just wait on him. Looks like he's playing, getting ready. Just trying to. Wait. Okay, Maddie's ready. Lucas is ready as well. This is an intense. This is an intense ball. Three, two, one, go. All right, this could be it. Yeah, Luke is turning fast as always. It's like Maddie is getting a six eighty eight. We're bringing it to 4-4. Four, four. Wow. That's intense right there. This is the sudden death of the mountain. Yeah. So one race will determine who goes to the finals yes. of cubing at home 1.2. This is a very important moment here. Both competitors taking a little while, or at least Lucas's. Maddie looks like he wants to get into it, but all right. Lucas is in the final stage of warm up. He's ready. Three, two, one, go. This is it. Could be the last one. Yeah. Five seventy four. Wow. Five seventy four. An assault wow. that matters this much. That's very impressive. And Maddie with a seven sixty seven. But Lucas will move on to the finals of Cubing at Home one point two. What an impressive turn of events. Oh. Jeez. That was nerve-wracking. Oh, my God. Yeah, for sure. That was... <laughs> GG, Maddie. Yeah, GG.
And we are back. We're here for the third place match, mm -hmm. which is featuring uh, Max Xiao and Maddie Hiroto and Nava, who were here for 4 by 4 earlier. They're also good friends, and they have been in yes. the third place match before in Cubing at Home. So this is a pretty exciting one. Uh, whenever you guys are ready, you can get started. And best of luck to both of you. Thank you. All right. Max already ready. All right. Cool. You're good it to looks go. Like they're getting started. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, these two solvers are good buddies. It's always good to have mm -hmm. them on stream. Um, and wow, Maddie is just turning super fast. Right wow. That. But I don't know if that was that great a solve. It was really fast turning. Great turning. Six oh, oh, one. Six I think Max one. is going to take that. Uh, what is this? A six. Looks like a six ninety. I think. Yeah, six ninety five. So Max is going to take this first solve. All right. <clears throat> I'm going We have a miss scramble here, so we're going to wait for the second solve. But Max is getting started, which is fine. Maddie will start after he re scrambles. Mm -hmm. Wow. An A perm around five seconds, 616. 616. Slight Very lockups strong. on the A perm, but still a really good solve. Yeah. Oh, wow. Maddie has really good turning. Oh, some. Unfortunate lock lockups on the last layer. Okay. Let's see what that is. Um, yeah, that's not going to be it. So Max is going to take that one too, making it 2 0. 2 0. Okay, now they're going to get started on solve number three. <clears throat> Got the hands warmer for Max. Yeah. And Maddie's just getting right into it. Maddie has really good turning, and wow! Oh, yeah. oh no! Oh, that drop at the end, but it, he didn't plus two it at least. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh five flat. Five flat. Oh, just <laughs> missing out. Oh, on the four. for Maddie! So wow, dang. just missing the Tetris. That's insane. Not full step. All right, and so it looks like Max is going to take the third solve there. He's just yeah. running away with this. So far, it's 3-0. Oh, Let's see if Maddie can come back here. Oh, great turning. I'm guessing that was 6. Yeah, 694. Six and we're waiting on 694 he gets. Oh, and a plus two. So Maddie is going to take this one. Um, that is his first win in this match, making it 3-1. Mm -hmm. These guys are close. Yeah. All right, Maddie finishing up self five with a six ninety nine. A wow. lot of high sixes for Maddie. Yeah. Let's see what Max is able to get. Can he sub seven it? Oh. And it looks like he can with a six fifty. That is going to be enough for him. That is a four one lead. Match point for Max. It is for third place. Let's see here. Yeah, the podium is definitely an important one. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see how this goes. <sighs> Ooh, okay, Maddie finishing with a six, six seven, seven six. six. And we're waiting on right. Max's six and solve here. Max can beat this. 
Oh, it looks like he can. Oh, but a no. plus two, making it a seven sixty-eight. So Maddie is gonna stay oh. in this. That is oh man, two. you had it right there. It's insane. Yeah. One turn away. Wow, that was all he needed was just the safety at the end there, but he didn't quite do it. Yeah, he threw I that cube down. All right, let's see. So we've got four two right now. Still a solid lead. He just needs one win over the next um, three solves to take this. Oh, man. And they're both starting around the same time. Oh, oh perfect timing for the starts. Wow. Right, let's first. see who finishes first. Oh, and it looks like Maddie finishes first. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be a six. Wow, and it gets it gets even tighter. No. It is four oh, God. three now. The match is close. Wow. That was crazy. Yeah. Always good to see them start at exactly the same time like that. Oh, let's see if they can hit it again. Mm. <sighs> Oh man, Maddie getting started. Such good turning. Yeah. What was that? It's gonna be a six something. Six forty. Six forty. And let's see. Oh, no. and Maddie's gonna. Oh, and, and plus, a plus two. two. So Maddie takes it. It's four four. <laughs> That's All insane. Right. We went from three zero to four death. four. It is a sudden death match yet again. Jeez. All right. The pressure is really rivalry. The pressure. Let's see who can take this. Let's see what happens here. It's scary. It's scary. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some like pretty intense nerves here mm -hmm. from both solvers. Maddie just getting so, started. Yeah, it's just a matter of who's able to play it safe, really. Taking get a lot a of inspection. Yeah. Max is waiting it out. And Maddie's done. Ooh. Oh, it's all. That was that solid. Is a 40, 41 for Bruh. Maddie. Let's see if Max can right. keep up with that. Oh, and he no. doesn't do it. Maddie takes it Maddie with, with the, the comeback. comeback. Oh, such a close match, but Maddie ends up being your third place winner. Wow. There you go. <laughs> okay. That was insanely hey, tight. Those that plus match. twos cost Max. Oh my god. Yeah. One turn one away. The pressure literally got to me really badly. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen a comeback like that in a while. That's congrats to both of you. It was a great match. Really Thank exciting you. stuff. And yeah, I mean, yeah. congrats to both yeah. for making top four, and congrats, mm -hmm. of course, to Maddie for the podium. And yeah, hope to see you in future cubing at homes. But yeah, yeah it's been good. Sure. And make sure to stick around for finals yes. uh, with Phil and family. But yeah, see you guys. It's see been good. Guys. Bye. Hey, welcome back. This is the final final between the finalists 
Leo Borromeo and Lucas Eder. So this is actually a matchup we haven't seen before on uh, cubing at home. So hopefully we'll see some good cubing action and uh, explore this this racing dynamic between these two cubers. I'm sure they know each other well, but this is their first meeting here in the finals like this at cubing at home. All right, so ready for me a thumbs up. So Leo is ready. He's waiting on Lucas a little bit. I'm sure he'll be ready soon. All right. Three, two, one, go. Yep. So, yeah. All right. Lucas is going first. And Leo. Just kind of oh, five forty-five. Wow. Okay, Lucas have a, has a nine, but Leo, that solve was just impeccable. Great turning, great cases. Just get a just get a mid five, you know. Is it just, bad to admit that I he's going so fast I can't see some of the cases? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Okay, but he got the point. Yes, that's he got the, the point. that's the main takeaway here. But we're waiting for Lucas to get scrambled, doing some algs. Good stuff, good stuff. Leo is ready, but we are still waiting on Lucas to be scrambled. Um, yeah, hopefully he will be ready pretty soon. Yeah, TPS King warming up his TPS. Yeah, all right, he's ready. Three, two, one go. Yeah, Lucas's uh, rituals are extremely interesting. Um, yeah. He'll give a thumbs up, but continue to warm up until the very last minute. Indeed. Yeah, just shows, uh, he just wants to be as fresh as possible. 568. All right. Leo with a 729. Lucas will take this point. Both competitors getting fives to win their respective solves so far. We're tie game at one. All right. Leo is getting scrambled, as is Lucas. We will. Alright, we just take a good mix scramble. Get him back on track there. He's re Lucas is ready. We're waiting for Leo though. Uh, Alright, he's ready. Three, two, one. Bit, but 671. 671. Okay, Leo will take this two to one so yes. far. Yeah, it's Six always sad to see the uh, the slip up at the end cost him, uh, you know, potential win. Yeah, but it happens, you know, part of, part of the game. Leo looks like he's scrambled, Lucas is getting there. All right, ah. Last point, Leo missed scrambled and won the point. Will this be the same thing for Lucas? Looks like he's scrambled now. We're just waiting on a thumbs up from both competitors. All right, Lucas is ready. Uh, looks like Leo's ready as well. Three, two, one. Yes, 
get it going. Wow. Can you guys do that? Ah, yeah. 645 for Lucas, but Leo will take this to three to one. Oh, Not Leo's Lucas, really, but still very much. fluid last layer. You know, it's yeah. always great to see. Yeah, keep in mind it's almost 6 a.m. in the Philippines where Leo is. I'm sure that if you've been around keeping at home, you know the whole story about Leo just battling the time zone. Yeah. All right, Lucas is ready. It looks like Leo is as well. Three, two, one, go. Five ninety eight. Wow. Three two uh, yeah. to Lucas now. Or uh three two to Leo. Lucas wins that point, however. It's like mostly fives. Like the worst winning time I think we've had is six one. Which is pretty insane. <laughs> yeah, it is. I think uh these guys have definitely taken competitive cubing to a to a new level uh, during yeah. this quarantine. Yeah, definitely. Excited to see what these these guys can do in WCA competitions. Right, yeah, for sure. Yeah, even if we don't see any world records, we might just see some some more five averages, low six averages, all that good stuff. Right, and Luca just scrambled, just getting his turning going. Leo looks about ready. Um, so they're waiting on Lucas, and he is ready. So three, two, one. Oh, oh no! Two. Two. Ooh, but Leo will get a seven oh eight. He's not happy, but he won the solve, so it's four to two in his favor. Oh, wow. One solve away from winning, keeping it home one point two. Yeah, that would be his third uh. keeping at home. Indeed, it should be right here, of course. So I guess okay. we'll see if uh, Lucas can stop Leo. And these wins mean a lot for the leaderboard. Yes, that's true. Right. Like he's close to ready. Um, Lucas still getting warmed up. The solve matters a whole lot to those competitors. All right, Lucas is ready. Three, two, one, go. All right. This is uh, potentially it. Potentially it. Yeah. All right. Lucas is going. He is not letting up on the TV. He's flipping a little bit. That doesn't mean really. 565 from Leo will win him keeping at home 1.2. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah, a sigh of relief That's from so Leo, who I'm sure is extremely tired from this uh, competition being from Asia. And uh, yeah, great performance by uh, both competitors. You know, uh, this is, uh, yeah, very, very exciting to see Leo win his third cubing at home. Now he's tied with Timon for uh, most cubing at homes won. Yeah. And uh, that's so impressive to to finish uh, ahead. Both guys actually finished ahead of many, many very qualified and uh, serious competitors. So congratulations to, to both of you. Congrats, Leo. Yeah, GG. Yeah, I'm sure you must be very tired. 
but uh, yeah. yeah, let's. Uh, Actually, uh, what's I up? I had a, a like a very different. I had I had like a different approach to like my solves. So like my like my inspection for like most of the solves was uh very bad. So I just tried like turning as fast as I could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh. It's interesting because most people you'd expect them to say, "Yeah, I'm a lot more careful," because uh, maybe it's a lot easier to to be careful than to turn fast when you're under pressure. But I guess that worked for Leo today. Wow. Okay. So I guess uh, we'll take a small break and we'll review the results of this competition. It was really great to have all you guys, uh, viewers and chat, for uh, being here and checking out all this really amazing cubing. I hope you really had fun. Uh, this has been Phil and Stanley, and looks like Leo is is gone. Maybe he's taking a break or something. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, worry. thanks. Thanks very much. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm here with Leo Borromeo, the winner of Cubing at Home 1.2. Leo, a couple weeks ago, you barely lost to Timo in the finals, five to four, and now you've come back to win this one. How do you feel? Yeah, um, it was quite unfor unfortunate that um, Timo couldn't make the finals. Yeah. I think it was just like having a bad day. Mm. But yeah, um, overall, I'm very happy with my win. Who is uh, scariest to you on the way to, to victory today? Uh, probably Lucas. Okay. Yeah, he was getting some like really good solves. Did you feel like this final was, or these finals for cubing at home 1.1 are, are season one are a little bit different than the ones before because of the, the prize money on the line? Does that affect your, your thinking and your solving at all? Nah, I just want, I just want to like, um, prove that I can I can solve a cube um, decently fast. Yeah. Well, we are uh, very very privileged to have you on stream, and we know for a fact that you can solve incredibly quickly, Leo. Uh, thanks so much for being on. Congratulations for your win, 
And we hope to see you in the finals of many more cubing at homes. Thanks so much, Leo. Yep, no problem. All right, we'll be right back with the awards, everyone. All right, testing, testing, one, two, three. I think we should be good now. But let's go through it. Third time's a charm, right, everybody? Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cubing at Home's award ceremony. We're super happy to have all of you guys here, and we wanted to recognize the fastest solvers through the weekend. So let's start with um, Paraminx. There we go. In third place for Pyraminx, we've got Michael Nielsen, a local to my area, actually, with a 226 average, Timon Kolashinsky with a 2.04 average, and John Gaynor with a one point, it's actually a 1.92. There's a slight typo in his results, but John Gaynor does win Pyraminx. 
congratulations to all of these competitors. They're all be going home with cubicle.com gift cards. So big thanks to the cubicle for sponsoring this competition and providing these prizes for each of the competitions. Our next event, we've got Mega Minx. In third place, we've got Tristan Chua Young with a 38, 39 average. Ethan Davis with another 39, and then Juan Pablo Juanqui rounding it out with a 36.9 to make first place in Mega Minx for cubing at home 1.2. Big congratulations to all of these competitors. Our next event is 4x4. Four four. In third place, we've got Max Shao with the 2661, which is just barely beating Kiran's 2679. In second place, Timon Kolashinsky again, his second second place of this competition with a 26-23. And then in first place, Ari Randers Pearson, another local to my area, actually. He ends up getting a 2074 single and wins with a 2536 average. On to our next event. We've got Skube round one. And oh wow. There is actually a tie for the third place average, which means Serhi Fedorniak wins on a 128 single. That second single, by the way, three moves into, uh, into hedge. Very, very good. Zane Kanani with a 245. Not only is he good at two by two, he's also good at skewb. And in first place, Dwayne Ramos with a 239. Congratulations to all of our skewb competitors and congratulations to our skewb podium. Moving on to Ready Cube, our unofficial competition of the day. In third place, we've got David Vojcik with a 866 average. Chris Vanderbrink with 793, and then Daniel Mullen with a 752. Congratulations to all these competitors, and of course, thanks to the Cubicle for providing gift cards for all of them. Moving on to six by six, in third place, we've got Ariane Kajrawal, who we saw on stream with a 137 mean. Kevin Hayes with a 131, and then Kieran Behan with a 124 mean. Congratulations to all of these competitors for six by six. Our next event, FMC, which took place yesterday, we had Kale Schoen with a 2367 and James Quinn as well. However, James ended up getting the better single with a 22. And because of that, ends up taking second place. And in first place with a 2167 mean, which is absolutely unbelievable to me, Christopher Chi takes first place. Congratulations to our FMC podium. And finally, moving on to three by three, we have, in third place, we had Maddie Hiroto Inaba taking it in exciting fashion, five to four over Max Shao. In second place, in the finals match, we had Lucas Etter. And finally, winning Cubing at Home 1.2 with an impressive scoreline, we had Leo Borromeo. Congratulations to Leo, and congratulations to all our competitors who competed throughout this entire day and yesterday as well. As always, at this point, I want to also th say thank you to, to you guys who watched and stayed for the entire day especially. I want to thank our sponsors, thecubicle.com and Rubix, for providing prize support and other support including letting us take their CEOs for the past uh, couple competitions. I want to thank Cubing USA for hosting us and supporting us. And finally, I'd like to thank all of the organizers and staff members who have been working tirelessly behind the scenes. We believe that every single week we try to add new, exciting uh, things to the stream, as well as improve the production value for you guys' enjoyment at home. And we hope that that shows. We work really hard to make sure that the content that's on here is exciting, interesting, and novel. And we hope to continue that through the rest of the season. And we hope that you guys have had an enjoyable time. So big thanks to the organizers. Big thanks to the staff members, especially the new staff members. And with that out of the way, we're going to be raiding a channel that I believe is complimentary to ours. Uh, Stephen Griggs is a Pennsylvania competitor and organizer who has been putting on some interesting content on Twitch. We're gonna be raiding him and he's got a match with uh, more Ready Cube action. So if you like the Ready Cube today, please go ahead and check that out. We're going to be right back here on the stream and then we're going to go and all raid his channel. So 
if you guys want to stick around, Stephen Griggs is going to be coming up right after this. So thank you guys. Thanks, everyone. And have a good night.